What's up, guys? It's Thursday. This episode is brought to you by our five wonderful endorsers and sponsors, like my man George from Division Street Auto. If you need something done to your car, trust me, go over there. At least you know he's fair and has integrity. He is not going to screw you at 595 Division Street Auto. I mean, did I say Division Street Auto? <laughs> Division Street in Pawtucket. You can give him a call at 401-723-7080. Also, Tops Electric Supply Showroom and Gallery. If you need anything done relating to lighting, that's landscaping lighting, indoor lighting, outdoor lighting, bathroom lighting, sun lighting, anything lighting. I don't even know lighting. Go see my friend Sean. He's a close friend of ours at Tops Electric Supply Showroom and Gallery. That's at 120 Point Street in Providence. You can give him a call at 401-861-0695. Even if you don't want to leave your house, they do in-house consultation. They'll come to you. So give him a call. Dory over at Oneyville Tire. If you need new tires, used tires, if you have a tire around your waist, if you want to swing from a tire, go see Dory. She's at 86 Plainville Street in Providence. You can give her a call at 401-421-1800. Also, JW and Son Construction. Stop making me laugh, Josh. My bad. <laughs> they do property management, commercial, residential. They're registered and insured. Talk to my man, John. He does a great job. Anything construction, you can get a hold of him at 401-487-4134. Last but not least, if you're looking for something to do on any given night, let's say your your girl backs out, your boyfriend backs out, they stand you up, whatever. I don't know. You're just looking for something to do. By 7 o'clock, 7.30, go out to Donkey Dodgers Poker. It's a great time, great people, great food. It's very, very social. It's a poker league. And what you do is you actually pay for a buffet and the poker is free by winning a nightly event or by even just entering period you can win nightly prizes you can monthly prizes and ultimately a seat into the world series of poker which is ten thousand dollars that's for the buying you could win that off a twenty dollar buffet ticket so go see him go see my man mike go see my man paul All you got to do is go on Facebook and look up the schedule to see where they're at. They're at a pub near you. And that's it, guys. Let's go. Time to talk some shit with the J Squared Podcast. Here we go. Take it away, Jay. What? <laughs> do you know how to do this part? <laughs> yeah, but you don't really do it, so go ahead. No. Nah. You don't want to? All right. <laughs> Three, two, one, bow. Are you going to start it off or no? No, no, you no, do shit. no I'm going to What's going on, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking scold me right when I you know. just started, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> You're not doing shit. We're here today with our good friend, Jay Goodwin. What's up, Jay? What's up, everybody? (laughs) That's the intro I wanted. What's up, fellas? What's going on? Same old shit, man. Living life, loving life, and living life. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) Obviously, uh, well, you look like you want to say. I want want you to introduce me. I I was about to. All right, I want to take a page out of our boys, man. Two stupid dogs. Oh, go ahead. (laughs) All right. Okay. All right. (laughs) Okay. Getting it in. All right. <laughs> We're like, hey, say what's up, guys. They're just like, arr, 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 arr. What? two I stupid actually, dogs. I enjoyed that podcast. Yeah, they're a lot of fun, man. Oh, did you watch the whole thing? I did, yeah. Had a blast it was a fun. little lengthy, I got to say. Yeah. But I, I did. I'm sure you watched it in uh, increments. Not, yes. Obviously, it's you didn't like, sit nah. for two, two sat, hours and 40 minutes. Yeah, sat down, no, lit some candles. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was <laughs> long, but I caught most of it. Let me ask you, what did what, you like about it? What? I like how you guys like feed off each other, how it was... <laughs> Originally, I believe their idea, and you kind of took from them, and yet at the oh, same yeah. time you feed off each other. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, you know the whole. I guess the podcast community. That's what everybody does. Like we're at, we're in some podcast groups on Facebook, and we're always exchanging ideas, equipment ideas, sound ideas. That's great. I mean, pretty much everything. I'm I'm new to it. I mean, I obviously in the in the poker world, being a dealer, um, 
you know, you hear about a lot of guys watching these poker podcasts, and I'm just like new, like I just learned about this shit, learned about Joe Rogan, all that stuff, like all the big stuff you hear people talk about. Mm. I just learned about it like a couple months ago. How old are you? Slow. I'm 38. Okay, yeah, I'm 39. So, yeah, I guess the older generations. We're, we're, we were behind. clueless. Like, yeah, sure, we're just, sure. you know, not clueless. I shouldn't say clueless, but uh, just behind the times when it comes to technology and what's the newest thing out, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Even though podcasting has been out for all quite a while. Forever. I feel like I knew about it, but I feel like I'm just learning now, like, how powerful they are. Right. How, how many people you can are. speak to. And, yeah. I think a lot of that plays into, you know, I, I work with some guys a lot, and they almost beat themselves up over... They're older, you know, and they feel like younger generation, just better at technology. I don't think it's necessarily true. I think we've just spent more time with it because with your generation, the majority of school, no computers whatsoever. Right. Where, you know, when I was growing up, there was computer classes and, you know, it was start, there was email, like AOL Instant Messenger, like that shit was starting to get integrated. Oh, you learned that in school? Not, in, but while I was in middle school, like America Online was popular. The internet kind of like took off. Yeah, so coming home after day. school, you know, like... Up until I was about 14, I would say there was a lot of like playing outside and, you know, still just being in the neighborhood, kick the can, dodgeball, manhunt, yep. all the bullshit. You know what I mean? Yep. And then that internet phase kind of crept in and it was just every day, like, you know, to do your homework, you do research online. So you were yeah. seeing how to download music and what YouTube was when that finally came out and shit like that. Oh, yeah. But I feel like, you know, when you're grown and out of school, most of the population doesn't continue to learn. You know what I mean? Like some people still do research and like to learn about shit, but a lot of, for a lot of people, you go to school and when you, somebody tells you, Hey, you're done learning, you just stop, you know, like you don't, um, take it upon yourself to try to figure out what's going on in the world. Yeah. Technology is ever growing and you have to keep up with it. Yeah. You got to stay up with it. Yeah. I got a funny story about my, my grandmother, you know, she, she's older. I think she's in her eighties. Um, I got her a fire stick. Grandma. Her, yeah, shout out to grandma. Shout out to Nana. I, uh, I got her a fire stick. What's up, Nana? Goody good her, <laughs> I showed her how to use it. Nana with the goody goodies. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, man. Y'all got jokes. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. But, uh, <laughs> Shane's like, who's joking? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I showed her how to use it, and, and I kept having to go over there, and she just couldn't figure it out. And finally, she gave it back to me, and she's like... Get this thing out of my house. I don't Wait, want what it was anymore. This? this was the one of them fire sticks. Oh, right, 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 right. You know, and I was trying to show her with the movies and the downloads and how to watch the free stuff awesome and stuff. Out. And I kind of felt bad for her because she was unwilling to learn new technology. George, yeah. yeah. A, you know, that's, that's change. Yes. Whenever there's change, it, it, uh, it causes stress. Even oh, if it's George. good change. Even yeah, if it's easy. great change. You know, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off, but uh, I'm just thinking of... Um, even Thanks, when buddy. people like, let's say they're, they're applying for jobs and they, they have so a choice cute. between this job and that job and that job and they get really stressed out yeah. about it and they're like, whoa, this is supposed to be a good thing. You have like amazing opportunity right here. This right. is a good change, but it does cost, cause stress, any kind of change. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, that's pretty much it. And she, and she made me take it back and she just, you know, it's, it's a perfect example how people, some people don't want to learn. They give up. Oh he's, yeah, he's telling him to back up. Don't sweat it. I know. I, I tried. I, I tried I, telling him I, earlier. I'm like, I, I, if you watch when you see the video, the I'm doing this. Oh. I'm like, then I'm like, wait a second. I'm people are looking at me do this right now. I'm like, what the fuck I can't help it. It's just like a habit. Like you, guys you know, have it's a, a lot, like more deeper voice too. But. To talk, you're gonna like, say you, know, you guys have more like fucking fat in front of you. Like, so you can't lean in when he speaks. Yeah, yeah. I just it's a habit of mine. I want to hey, give a shout out to you guys too. I feel like from day one when you came on, oh thank you, it was like with some crushed ice, all audio and fucking Walmart microphones. And you guys have come a long way. We got the video shit looks like 4K. We got <laughs> oh, these shit. real nice mics. We got the nice setup over here. So shout out to you guys. Thank you, thank oh, you. Thank you. Yeah, fun fun fact: these are actually the same mics we've had since we started. Really? We just got oh, we've more of we're using yeah the well oh. no. Mine isn't. Oh, that's true, actually. This one is. I used the piece of POS. I've seen the white one, yeah. Yeah, the, the white one. You're the, you're the first one to ever use that mic. We had the white one last episode. Yeah. Okay. We that. just grabbed that one, a little more consistency. And uh, that's, I think, because if, if all three mics suck, you might not be able to pick it up. Right. But when we have two mics that are exactly the same and then that third mic is different you know it's easy to pick up on or pick up on what doesn't sound good and what does but it just shows that you guys yeah. have like come a long way you're getting better yeah you know? i'm gonna and since episode i think either three or four is when george jumped on with us and once he jumped on that's where the fucking uh Shout out to exp george. yeah the exponential like uh quality getting better 
tri- what's triggered from yep. him coming on. You know, it's, everybody support it's definitely these helpful. guys. Start advertising with them. Start listening. Fuck yeah! If you're, uh, shout out to Walmart. You know, we need another sponsor. <laughs> Just get in there. Good sponsor, man. <laughs> so what? Are, so what are the, some of the topics we're gonna, we're going over tonight? Whatever. Yeah, it's written down. Mr. Yeah. Goodwin. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Goodwin's in the building. I uh, I just watched that. I mean, it's pretty popular in the news today. If you look on Facebook, everybody's talking about that fucking um documentary, Michael Jackson leaving Neverland. I think it's called. Sure, sure. Yeah, I've seen the thing for it. And I don't know. I oh, get, did you watch it? I haven't watched it yet. No, but I, I try to stay calm on everything. What's crazy to me is that you know so many people are talking about it right now because of this documentary, and I watched it. It's a two part documentary. And I, I don't know, man. Like I want to pick a side so hard, and I want to just shun the fuck out of him because, like, if you're a child molester, that's pretty sick, man. It's gross. My problem is, is a he's not here to defend himself right now. So these do- like I have a problem with the documentary in that way, and mainly because the documentary isn't giving us anything new. You know what I mean? It's right. from I watched it's the first part. Hearsay. It's a hundred percent hearsay. Oh, is it? One hundred percent. And I, wa- you know, I went into this with an open mind. Like, hey, let me hear some. I know there's evidence out there though, because I remember seeing, um, you know, like previews of a documentary, but I, I didn't really get into it. But this new documentary, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be uh, swaying anybody's opinion because it's really the same two stories that we've heard for the last thirty years. It was just on HBO this time. You know, there's not one referenced court document, not one referenced. Uh, you know, bank statement regarding anybody's being paid off or anything. It's two boys telling a story that they say happened, you know, what, 30 years ago, maybe? 25 uh, years know, ago? I, I want to sh- first say that, I, you know, shout out to Michael. I like Michael. I grew up on Michael. Like, that was the thing back in the day. Like, you did it. You did the dance. You grabbed the crotch. Like, it was you the and the love, the zipper jacket. Yeah, exactly, man. Michael. Thank he was Michael, like the epitome of cool to some degree. Absolutely. and But also, he made poor decisions in his life. Things that he thought in his brain that were normal, like having a couple kids come over, come sleep over, come sleep in the bed, which were probably a million percent innocent, in the public's eye just is not a good look. Yeah, it's never going to be sold as okay. Right, right. You George, know? get your fingers ready, man. There's going to be a lot of uh, checking into shit on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, same thing with the R. Kelly matter. Um I feel like he made some poor decisions in his life, you know? I don't think these people are monsters. I don't think they're guilty. I don't think they're the extreme part of rapists and and all that crazy stuff. But I think along the way, they made some really bad decisions. But we all have. We all have a past. We all have negative things we wish we could change. It's very true. I just want to be clear and draw the line that I've done some fucked up shit in my day, but my past is nothing compared to these guys. Like, oh sure, there, sure. There are no, there are no rumors going on like that about me. And what you said with Michael Jackson that I find pretty interesting is, I actually don't think that he made terrible decisions because I don't think his decision making should even be um, like qu- he's not qualified, or- qualified or scrutinized maybe because his ability to make the good decisions wasn't really qualified because of a couple things like his body was altered you know his his doctor um confirmed that his father had him chemically castrated meaning that you know he wasn't a man he didn't really produce testosterone he you know was it to but, keep that level in his voice for all yeah exactly days? you know okay. uh, i think they call it a i don't know there's a word for it george can probably pull it up for us Whatever. like a castrotico or something um but also he was a fucking like bigger than life star when he was still a kid so he missed out on a childhood, you know what I mean? So I think there's a good chance that in his mind, you know, for anything that was innocence, because maybe some of it was sexual, but I'd, I'd be willing to bet that a lot of it had to do with him just literally wanting to be a kid, you know, and feeling like he had the Absolutely. mindset of a kid and being like, I didn't have sleepover parties, I didn't have video games, you know, I didn't have staying up late, watching and movies, ex- eating ice cream, it I'm was sorry. just a, no problem. It, you know, he was just fucking touring on the road, working probably you know endless hours like his father is notoriously one of the hardest people ever on a kid in their life so there's a whole part of his life that every kid should experience that he didn't and you know maybe he was trying to get a piece of that back that would explain the whole never neverland or whatever that's called peter pan the animals the rides the amusement park yeah the amusement i mean that's all kid stuff kids love those things you know and when you don't experience that in your life i guess there's that void that maybe you have to fill over time I'm not saying, like me personally, I would never say that Michael Jackson himself wasn't weird. He was a weird dude. Absolutely. Rightly so or yeah, not rightly so, whatever. It doesn't matter. Opinion, he was yeah. a weird guy, right? You know, he just he had a, he had a fucked up kind of upbringing and just made him, you know, an, an outcast. But if I look at all of the 
all the evidence that I have seen, I guess, and all the interviews and stuff, even when that guy was asking him, you know, asking Michael, like, hey, don't you find it weird that you're asking kids to sleep in your bed? And, and Michael says, wait, hold on. You're associating something sexual to something that's not sexual. In his head, like, there's right. nothing. Yeah, it's all he's he goes. Known. That's in that's in your head, not mine. Just because somebody's sleeping in my bed, that doesn't mean you know, shit's going down or like we're fucking or right. anything like that. That just means that in your head, that's what you think. Right. Right. That's so, a good way to look at it because if you perception. ask most parents, you know, like or even need, like my niece sleeps in my bed when she sleeps over, you know, and if anybody was to ever accuse anybody, like accuse me or. Even bring to even bring that thought up is like you're a sick fuck, you know. Like uh, a few months ago, I don't know if you guys are Patriot fans, but if you know Tom Brady, obviously. But there was a he was doing a little documentary on his preparation, you know, for the football games and shit. And the cameras were in his home, and part of the show they showed him, you know, talking to his son. And he's, you know, Tom Brady's just like, all right, come give dad a kiss, you know, and he gives his dad a kiss. And people are like scrutinizing him for being like, you know, you shouldn't be kissing your son on the lips. That's creepy. That's weird. You I was know, just about to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, what the fuck are you talking about? You sick fucks. Like, in most, I feel like in a rational mind, as a parent, I look at that as him just showing affection to his kid. Right. You but know, that's like the world we live in right now. That, right. You get a kiss I kiss my everything. daughter on the lips. Uh, you Absolutely. Know? I, actually, when I see Poor my child. older brother, he's four years older than me. I kiss him on the cheek still when oh, I see him. Oh, I thought. Uh, no, when I hey, just listen, it out. You, you know, my father passed away two years ago. When I used to hey, Jeff. see him, I I kiss him on the lips. Just that's just the way my family was raised. We we're very kind of tight knit yeah. in that sense. Well, it's you just know? A, the way you show affection. You know, when I, mean? I see my uncles, I kiss them. You know, mm. and it's how we were brought up. That's so we think that's normal. Other yeah. people that have never seen that think that that's the devil. When I see my yeah. stepmom, I give her a nice smack on the ass. Anywho, yes. but also, <laughs> but also these people, you know, talking about people that are like famous. when I see my cousin, I give him a handy. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez! But people that are famous, you know, Stop, they, Carl. they've never had a normal life. They've never these are Kelly's, these Michael Jackson. Never. They yeah, don't know what it's like stars. to go to Walmart like that. Eminem had a song with who the hell was it years ago with um, Exhibit, and he talked about he can't go to his mailbox anymore. He can't go to the store. He was like literally crying out in this song. I forget the song. We'll find it later. Mm. Talking about he just can't do the things that normal people do anymore. You're talking about Exhibit, or Exhibit was saying this about Michael no, Jackson? Eminem, no, Eminem and Exhibit were on a song. Oh, about, Eminem and Exhibit. Yes, yes, about not the realities of just not being able to do the things that normal people do. And it's kind of sad. I can't, you kind of feel bad for people like that. That's very insightful. Like, because we can go to Walmart and nobody attacks us. Right. People mm. go there and there would just be mob after mob. Speak for yourself, dude. Podcast is kind of <laughs> blowing up. <laughs> this is true. This is true. These guys are getting famous. No, no, obviously. But uh, what you're saying is completely right. Yeah. And I think that another factor in what makes this so like less surprising because if I if you found out that I had these allegations against me it'd probably be like holy shit you know what I mean like nobody like everybody would say I never saw that coming but when it happens with a a celebrity that started out as a childhood celebrity there's almost a a part of you that isn't surprised and I I have a feeling that these kids are um exposed or not exposed but yeah exposed to like sexuality much earlier than normal kids oh, that are in that limelight. You know what I mean? Because yep. look at, you know, if you're a child celebrity, and, you, and I hate to say this, but with somebody like Britney Spears or Christina Aguilera, when they're like 14 or 15, man, that's it. They're just sex symbols, you know, for, for everybody. And you, I'm sure that there are some creepy motherfuckers, man, that's that weird, are like... Bro. I mean, it's, it's true, the though, truth, dude, you know, play, like, yeah. I'm just that's letting you know it, how it is. That's what um, Hollywood does to And I'm sure that in Hollywood, dude, you know, there's some creepy motherfucking, like, adult men that are like... You know, like fucking with them, bro. Ha probably having sex with them. I, I guarantee, if there was a way to look up, you know, like when they're sexually active, if you're in Hollywood and you're pursuing that kind of entertainment career, the age is probably so much younger than. See, I would think would be the that, opposite. Oh, not a chance. Only because the social interaction isn't there. Meaning, like, we go to high school, we go to middle school. We're a, we have a group of friends mm -hmm. that hang out with another group of friends. Meaning, like, you go to parties and stuff like that, and you're drinking at an early age. Meanwhile, these kids, they don't necessarily have that social life I, I mean i don't know maybe they do, do well know, there's just so much money and outrageousness involved dude that's why so many of them get um, oh, you're saying maybe from like a, a, a just higher, higher up. up yeah it's, it's still happening they sure. still have all these um events and they're still social um what's the word i'm looking for like social interactions there with them it's just not with their Peers, peers. and it's not the same age as them. You know, it's with other celebrities, which are generally older. You know what right. I mean? But still, I don't know, man. That's 
I would just it just seems more likely that they're exposed to it much sooner than the average kid. I was reading that article on Michael Jackson, or uh, there was uh, some article that somebody posted about Michael Jackson, the HBO special. I, I don't know who it was, but um, I mean, you can always tell the 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 temperament of the article and where they're about to go, what they're trying to sell you. Yeah. They're trying to sell you a, a narrative or a like, and, and that guy who wrote that article, he was obviously, you know, against Michael Jackson. Mm. He's going this sick fuck and blah. What do you, th-? and, and, you know, he poses questions like, Oh, the kid's sleeping in his bed. What do you think's happening? Well, now you're leaving the reader right. to assume of course, yeah. and, and using, you know, kind of emotion yeah. to, to make a judgment call. And I don't think that's necessarily fair, but I understand that's what sells. And that's what HBO is, might be doing too. I'm not saying that Michael Jackson was completely innocent. I think he was, but you know, I also think he was. And yeah. I think that the, definitely, like, I enjoy a good documentary about anything, but you've got to show me both sides and let me decide. The can, it won't sell. Yeah, when you when you lead me one way, I'm, I'm more liable to shut it off, even if it's the way I'm already leaning because you're yeah. not showing me both. You know, you I feel like that. I, I get where you're coming from with that, Jay. And um, Up until pretty recently, maybe like six months or a year ago, I was kind of that same way. Like I felt like if you're trying to sell me on some bullshit, I'm not even going to read the article. But now I'm trying to be a little more open and... Because I'm confident now that I say or that I feel like, no matter what this article's trying to sell me, just like kind of a ma- just kind of like a math word problem. Like I'm gonna pick out the facts that I need to know. Like I'm gonna leave like their yeah. narrative out of it, but just get like, there because there could even though they're trying to spin it one way, there still could be some facts that are relevant in that. Sure, you know, Absolutely. and the the problem that I had with this Michael documentary, uh, Michael Jackson documentary, is it came in two parts, and I watched the first part, and after two hours of watching it, I. You know, I said, hey, there was not one fact, nothing in here. This entire two hours was somebody just retelling a story. You know, it's nothing new to me, and I can't... Ultimately, what you're saying is that if I don't think Michael Jackson's, or if I think he's a pedophile, I am 100% confident in these two boys and their story. That's right. it. I, and he's a, it's not fair because he doesn't have a chance to defend himself. But I, I'm, just, I'm, talking about, I'm talking about just that documentary. I think there were a lot of court cases where a lot of things did come out. You know, and the way that his home was set up with secret rooms and two-way mirrors. And George, confirm this for me if you could. But he had some, um, like, contraptions in his home where if you were walking towards his bedroom, you know, the hallway towards his bedroom, there were either bells or something that would trip at the sound of footsteps so he could hear you and it would alert him. Wow, that's interesting. Which, to me, my first thought is... Okay, you're doing something wrong to little kids, and you're worried about getting caught. Then my second thought is it's basically so, an alarm that was set up to let them know right. if anybody was coming near the bedroom. All right, so he, so that's there. I mean, that's I think that's the most logical reason why he would have them because he was fucking with little kids and he knew he wasn't supposed to. Another reason could be is you know he was also a fucking childhood celebrity. I don't know. He could just have a lot of mental conditions. He could have anxiety and sure, sure. be worried about somebody coming in, seeing him naked. Who the fuck knows? Mm-hmm. You know, and really be. Well, he was also Crazy. abused. He was abused by his father. He was abused, him. but he also could be doing something innocent with the kids, but he, he may understand the perception that it has. That's what I was about to say. You know what I mean? He So he, because I think we've all been in that situation, you know? Yeah, like, you're doing I, something innocent, and yeah, just, if somebody sees you, they're going to be like, very, well, what are you doing? <laughs> he, like, for example, like playing pool at a bar. You know what I mean? Like, there's times where I've played pool, and you could, and not me personally, but you could, a situation where you're helping a girl play pool. And it could be just that, you know, you're just helping her figure out how to shoot the shot. Mm -hmm. But from the outsider, that looks like, you know, you're flirting, maybe trying to take this girl home and you might avoid that situation altogether. So maybe he had these alarms just because the optics of it look so bad. And that's why I, anytime I'm trying to teach a a female how to shoot pool, I always wear pants now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That was a good one. That was a good one. But I mean, I'm thinking of situations even like when you're, let's say when you're tucking in your shirt, sometimes you'll close the door, you know, wherever you're at or go behind closed doors just because you don't want somebody looking at you going, what is that guy doing? Right. That's that perception. Yeah, it's his perception, you know, oh, like he's got yeah. his hand in his pants, you know, doing this, tucking. It's like, yeah, but that's tucking in your I'm shirt jerking off right here at the bar. Just yep. <laughs> Yeah, you know. Yep. So, I mean, you know. I, I've always been a fan of Michael Jackson, but I mean, I'm smart enough. I think to you know, I think I'm smart enough to differentiate Debatable. between his, you know, 
His his talent is one thing. His entertainment value is one thing. Yeah. And this is something totally different. I'll never take away the fact, whether he's innocent or guilty, that this man is probably one of the greatest entertainers that ever walked the face of the earth. Absolutely. I still uh, think he holds the record for most albums ever sold ever. I still think I'm that's sure. never been broken. I mean, he's probably sure. the most famous man. Oh, he's the, he's the big, the most iconic. I mean, he's right up there with Jesus, probably. <sighs> <laughs> He's up there. Well, Actually, here's the thing. Uh, Michael Jackson's loved across the globe. Jesus is not. Ooh, yeah. that's a good point. Well, yeah. There's probably but, two billion. This way. There's probably two billion people right now that fucking resent Jesus, and that's just India. Well, you know, never, we're, we're not talking about whether they like him or not. We're just talking about just exposure. You know. So I mean, like, yeah. yeah. That's probably close. Yeah, my, I mean, I don't think we'll, we'll, nobody will ever be as big as Michael Jackson was as far as an entertainer. I don't think. I don't even think it's possible now. Those with, are big shoes to fill. Yeah, it, it was huge. Yeah, that Thriller album, I think, is the most albums ever. I think it's nobody just too saturated now. Of, yeah. You know, it's I too mean, easy to get. Like, it's too easy to. He did it at a time where if you didn't have the right connections and access to you know media like a point. radio station or a tv nobody was ever going to hear you we're right now dude like who the f- we're two fat guys in a basement and every anybody can hear us that we want to oh yeah there's so many you outlets know? yeah so it's i don't think we'll it, ever see somebody grow that big again just because of how saturated it is and how in, easy it is in fact there's up and coming artists that are totally skipping over steps now they don't even they don't even want to talk to labels because there's they have this everybody's on facebook mm. and everybody's I mean, you can go on soundcloud you can go on itunes you know the whole thing and, you know, these record labels are going, hey, we want to sign you and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, nah, fuck oh, off. Thanks. I'm going to do it myself. And wow. they're doing it. Yeah. Like, if you look up uh, uh, Token, he, he was, a, a, I think, a, a young kid from Jersey. Like, 15? Rapper, yeah. yeah, he's a YouTube rapper. He's blowing up. He's getting, I, I think him and M were going, we're firing shots back at each other. And he's he's always told the, wow. you know, the the record labels like nah fuck you I'm, shove it bub yeah I'm gonna do it on my own and now he's doing it that's good I can't yeah wait. that's awesome more people need to do that in life in fuck general. yeah dude because the yeah. record labels they fuck you you know what I mean they yep. like, they want they want to own you they just want to cut like. yeah I, if you can I mean I, I don't even know how you would word this to find it but I was listening to Rogan's podcast the other day and I think they were talking who was on there Steve Tyler with Aerosmith and he was talking about how dirty and like shisty that industry with having like a record label and a manager for a band was like these guys made this label and the manager so much money and got shafted you know didn't sure. get much money back pennies on the dollar for, like for compared to what they were bringing sure. in that was like notoriously one of the fucking grimiest industries dude as far as how the money is managed so. Weren't you in music or something, or video or something along those oh, lines? Oh, I've done or? my little bit of everything, yeah. When I was younger, I wanted to be a rapper. I did my rap thing. Oh, did shit. you? I went through that phase, yep, yep. Yeah? Later did you ever on, make I, a song? Uh, yeah, I made plenty of little bullshit songs. Did yeah. you have a, a notebook and like... Oh, yeah, I had pen and paper. To, this was even before the Eminem era. I just, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to do my thing. And, you know, you realize after so many months of just in your basement and, you know, oh, giving shit. it to your buddies, uh, yeah, I need to do more and I need more money and more time and, okay, this ain't going to work. I got to do know, something else. got to get a job too, yeah. So like I will realize else. that. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I, I, excuse me, I want to touch on that whole, that whole, the whole culture, how it evolved really fast. Just, so, I mean, I remember, you know, I posted this on Facebook recently saying that, you know, I, I cringe when I watch Drop the Mic or... Uh, wiling out, you know, that whole thing. And a lot of people find it, you know, entertaining, which I can understand to some degree. Uh, if, if you didn't grow up in that culture and listening to this type of music, you would find it kind of entertaining because it's right. new to you and it's like, right. whatever. Somebody like me, I, I'm like an old school hip hop guy, grew up on rap. And I remember being on the corner and freestyling with my friends and somebody's beatboxing. Yep. And Lunchroom, yeah. I mean, yeah, way before. Eminem was even, you know, and anything. And after 8 Mile came out and the whole battle rap scene started to kind of blow up, uh, then it became a thing. But before that, so now I look at, let's say, Drop the Mic with, you know, you see the show like, uh, what's that TV show host, Phil, Dr. Phil versus, you know, whoever. And I'm going... Oh man, that's so cringe. That's yeah, so like, that's like a corny version of yes. They went they went total left with it to try to bring like soccer moms to watch it. That's how exactly, it but it to works. appeal to a different market. Oh, sure, it works. oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, it absolutely does. Absolutely, absolutely does. Yeah, so I I don't think it's even fair to compare those shows to like true hip hop. 
No, because you know not they're, at they're all. two different, two very different things. Well, that's the thing. How do you define true hip hop? Because it's ever evolving. Like today's yeah. hip hop is not what I used to listen to at all. Like yeah, the mumble think, rap and blah blah. Yeah. blah. I think music Crap. is yeah. a lot like Crap. like comedy. <laughs> Shit. You know what I mean? It's a lot like comedy. It's uh, it's um, what's what's that word where everybody has their own opinion of it? It's subjective. You know what I mean? So to say something is true hip hop, it's a kind of a silly statement. There is, there's the type of hip hop that you prefer and the type of hip hop that you prefer. Yeah, and I'm sure there are subgenres. You know what I mean? Like gangster rap or oh yeah, you know, like dance kind of club club hip hop, whatever the case is. But yep. they're just two very different things. That you know they can't really be compared. You know, like uh, back in the '80s, I'm assuming that's when you were you know doing your thing, slinging crack in the corner, rapping <laughs> with your boys. Well, no, actually, you know, my big time was actually the '90s, the '90s era. Yeah, yeah I, mean, we grew up I, I at listened the same to time, yeah. early yeah. '90s. That's I mean, kind of like the golden age. I did listen age, to right, like the hip-hop. '80s stuff, the you know Fat Boys back in the day and whatever. But when you know Beastie Boys, Big Daddy Kane, uh, yes. Eric B and Rakim. Uh, I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, just name and off. Jack stuff. Hustler. Yeah, all kinds of KRS One. KRS One. Yeah. Yep. When he, you know, first started coming out and Tribe uh, Called Quest. Tribe Called Quest. I mean, we can go on and on here. Yeah. I mean, it was Drake. just so. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> it was just so different, and it was you know. They would address social issues a lot of a lot of the time, you know, um, fuck the police and blah blah blah, gangs and et cetera, et cetera. Today it's not focused around that anymore. Today it's it's more uh, fuck bitches get money. Baselines, the and just, same shit. That's yeah, how I, the same baseline, the yeah. same kind of. Yeah, I don't even know how, to, how it. Eminem happened. made it big, not because of his color of his skin, although a lot of people try to attribute it to that. But he made it big because he was talking about shit nobody would say. That's well, what I think it boils down to, and nobody's done that in a while like that. Nobody's yeah. changed it up and gave us something different. That's right, a different viewpoint, a different. Yep. Uh, I still Espe- can't think of one Especially song. coming from a white kid, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, where, where he's talking about, you know, getting bitches and, and getting money and, and... His family yeah. life and growing up in Detroit right. and blah, that blah, blah. realness. We yeah. want to hear the realness, not the fake shit. Right. Of rims and money and, you know, right. all that stuff. But I'm sure you guys could find some rappers that actually do talk about that shit. say logic. Yeah, sure. you know. Yeah, no, there are they're some, just, yeah. They're just not big enough because ultimately that's not what the masses want to hear, you know? I think a lot of times people... For the most part, you know, and I think the like the album sales and the popularity of certain artists reflects this, but people use music as kind of just a source of entertainment. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be too relatable, more of like a, like an aspiration of somebody, you know, like yeah. when you look at life and if you could, you know, if you ask any probably 20 to 30 year old man, hey, what's your ideal life? It's going to be like, I want a lot of bitches and I want a lot of money. You know what I mean? So that 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 rap shit, like when it's that style, can be appealing to most people. Oh, absolutely. You know, so it's. I'm sure that if you like, he's just said. I think logic. You mentioned. You know, you can find rappers. You know, if you still sure. want to hear that kind of music, they're just not going to be as popular. Prior to M, the white market was just kind of a flop. I mean, you had milk. You had snow. Snow. You had people like that <laughs> that were just like semen. Oh, like just man. great names for these white and, rappers. And that, and that goes Powder. to show. Yeah, <laughs> that goes to show that you don't want to do something that you know. You're just all you're doing is copying. You're, you're co- you know you're white and you're copying what let's say the black culture has already done. M did his own thing. He came out with this whole new innovation of how to tell these stories through hip hop and rap and that's i think what hit mainstream and then he hit the the white market which is you know that's Something a huge that market never been done. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> that's yeah that's a huge market oh yeah where you know before the the average white kid couldn't relate to what minority life is like and all that and, and gangster rap and etc cetera, etc cetera. but they could relate to M and even like uh you know let's say Kid Rock he started out rapping i believe um what were some other... Did he? Yeah. I think him and M were friends back in the day. Yeah, they do have a song, yeah. And they both went different ways. Kid Rock went to like kind of the rock rap. Kid Rock is a G, dude. I just read an article that he um, took like a $50,000 pay cut or something at a concert because he refused I think I read to, this too. He refused to sell the tickets for more than $20 a That's piece sick. because he wanted his actual fans to be there, not just rich motherfuckers. Yeah, see, I love that about what people. Boss, you know, dude, huh? If you can still be as big as you are and stay humble... I yeah. remember, uh, you know, last year Eminem, uh, he got a letter or something. I read this article of uh, he got a letter from somebody overseas or whatever, a, a soldier in Afghanistan or something that wanted an autograph. 
And he wrote him back and said, only if I can have yours too. And I was like, damn, like that's some humble shit. That is. You that's know what I mean? Dope. Like the, the, to be to be able to be that big and still be on that level, it's, it gets you kind of choked up, you know? How do you, how do you feel specifically? How do you guys feel about, you know, M taking a side in the politics? Um, oh, I thought that was so bad for him. I can understand do, it. Do you, you think know, it benefit? He him? just he just might. Did it strengthen his the you know let's say the people that are on the liberal uh, democratic side? Did it strengthen that bond or did it weaken a, mar- a whole market? Go ahead. Sorry. Well, do you think it hurt him or helped him? I think how, it hurt. How, him. Well, how do you personally feel about him now? Is it going to affect the way you listen to his music at all? It, it, you know what? I, I relate it to like Michael Jackson. Like I always respect M's talent, right. but as a person. You know, as a as a celebrity figure, I yeah. lost respect. Yeah, I'm like, I don't think oh, that's man. relevant to him, though. You know what I mean? It's, it's not relevant to his talent. Or you mean I'm to, not relevant? Meaning like meaning me as a person? Well, no, no, no. Meaning uh, you're you're relevant. Yeah, but him, <laughs> meaning he doesn't like, give a. At fuck the end of the day, that. you know, he's a rapper. He's an entertainer. If you still listen to his music and you'll still play his music when it comes out, he could give a fuck what your opinion of him politically is. Right. I thought you know it was. I thought it was bad look in general. I think that you should never bring politics into something that it's not a part of. I, got, I disagree with you. But that's argu- there. Ar- isn't that argu- arguable? Saying that politics is n- not a part of of let's say the pop culture or the hip hop culture. Oh, it is. Okay. But let's just say let's go to the f- fact of talent and selling records. He's selling records to everybody on all left. Right and middle, right. That don't give a fuck about how his views are. Yes. All of a sudden, he brings up his views. Guess what? He just canceled out two of those, two out of the three. Now he's got one third locked up, and he just lost two thirds. And yeah. I, but it could have been anyway. He could have went Republican Trump way, and he could have. Yeah. It would have been negative on the other side. So you could have. Uh, you can gain people too in the same effect. I don't, of course. I don't. I don't think it makes a difference too much to be honest. He's that established. He's not going to lose anybody. I mean, I lost a little respect for him because... Me too. But I think it's unfair to say that like he shouldn't be doing that because ultimately, I mean, he he has a platform. You know what I mean? He has a voice. He's exponentially bigger than we probably ever will be, but it's no different than us talking about... Ever say that. You know... (laughs) Coming for you, M. It's no different than us talking about politics right now on a show. Like people, a lot of times listen to us just because we might be funny or they like who the guest is. They don't want to hear our political views or... Whether or not... Yeah, whether or not they do. Like, fuck them. Like, we're going to talk about what we want to talk about. And if he has an opinion on something, I don't think that his job title should restrict him from saying that. Well, put it this way. He came out with an early... When he, you know, was still becoming M and Slim Shady and that whole thing in his earlier uh, releases, he's always made fun of, you know, Bush and Cheney yep. and whatever. And he always called himself a rich Democrat, but he, ne- so, and he still sold and he still, you know, everybody was cool with that, you know, mm-hmm. until he took a real solid stance and not only took a solid stance, but told the other opposing view, Hey, fuck you. Cause he right. did say that mm-hmm. in that video, you know, like, if if you if you like Trump, then you know, I don't care if you fucking you know buy my shit or not. Or right, 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 and that yeah. was kind of like a slap in the face to your fans that that supported you for twenty yeah. something years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I feel like anybody like that famous. You know, you if they eat something, you're gonna buy it. If they shop somewhere, you're gonna shop there. It's you you, you feel connected to them. As right, fan, absolutely. You feel connected. So. I never knew who he supported, but I was cool with that. And then when he told me he didn't support the same person that I supported. I lost a lot of faith. I did. Yeah. You know, I still like him. His music's still great, but he definitely went down a couple notches, and it it kind of hits you because we relate to somebody as if he's a real person, as if he's my best friend. Mm. But in reality, I've never met. I mean, guy. when he was on MTV doing URL or not URL, T R L, T R L, URL. That's the ultimate rap league on, on YouTube. <laughs> Pretty big, but um, uh, T R L and it's a website link to like a URL <laughs> and doing and doing those things like. So many people, and I remember watching him being funny, and I'm like, I would love to hang out with him. Like, his sense of humor is, like, right there with mine, and I, like, we would just bug, you know? And and now I don't I don't have that feeling anymore. I'm like... Yeah, the connection's gone. I oh, man. Way. Like, dude, you really yeah. went... You, you took... You, you went, like, two steps too far. Yeah. Two steps. That's how I feel, yeah. I mean... There's you, certain things you should keep to yourself in this world. Certain things. Like what? For instance, when you're in that position, I can talk about politics because I'm not famous and nobody gives a shit about me. But somebody in that field, there's certain things like that that shouldn't be talked about. But why? That's like discounting his voice, you know, his validity. It's I don't I don't like that. 
I'm like, Jay, I don't well, like you, Jay. I'm not, yeah, <laughs> I don't no, like, I, I, I just disagree with that. business standpoint. Exactly, yeah. Because yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked a little bit around the business. But who's know, to say? To you know, like that's, that's his decision on whether or not he cares about taking that loss or not. So if he's okay with it, you know, and he's understanding and accepting of the consequences, I like, guess that, fuck yeah. it, this is what it is. I'm you sure know? he's definitely beyond his time where he's not worried about album sales. So, I mean, yeah. if, if that's the way to go, then absolutely. Yeah, is it the best care. business move? You know, it depends what your intent is. I agree with you. It's probably, it's probably. I think it's probably smarter to just be uh, neutral on it. Like Taylor Swift, I don't think ever talks about it, or I could be completely wrong. She might be very proactive in it. But I think she may have said, hey, I'm not, like, she might have said publicly, George, confirm this if you could for me. Uh, I think she actually said publicly, like, I don't want to tell anybody who to vote for because I'm not educated enough to sway people one way or the other. Which, if I'm accurate, if I'm, yeah, if I'm accurate, you know, like, I think that's a respectable thing. And, you know, I respect that she said that. And I think, you know, at her stage in her career, that's probably um, the most you know, profitable thing that you can do as an entertainer. Absolutely. But when you're at the point where you, you know, money is not your ultimate, you know, motive, then fuck you. Like, if you have an opinion, you have every right to say it as, as you do or I do. Well, they said it before she had that stance where she wouldn't say anything at all. And then in a bunch of tweets, and, and she said publicly that she endorsed the Democratic side. And then uh, she had this whole conservative uprising, basically. So yeah, that- most of pop culture is... is Leans to the left. And Why is that? Um, I, you know, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and go say ahead, because Jay. it's faddish. I would say so too. I would what say. What does their weight have to do with it? <laughs> it, it it's chic. It's people you know, go with people are more followers than leaders in this world. People go with what the mainstream is talking about. That's right. That's what they do. Oh, everybody's doing this. Okay, I'll do that. I mean, my, our kids are perfect examples. You know, your kids come home and they hear this song. They hear this Momo on YouTube. They hear this, you know, this person's rocking this or this person's Momo buying these little things. <laughs> Whatever it is, you know, my daughter, she's going to be watching this, you know. They learn these things. Shout out to Goody follow. Jr. Yeah, shout out to Goody Jr. Not hey, Jr. Olivia, what you, what's go up? to bed. Is there a go to bed? <laughs> <laughs> this is not live, sir. That's all right. It could be like noon when she hears it. She's like, what? She, <laughs> she was already asking if she could watch it tonight. I said no. No doubt. So, no doubt. She'll well, check it I, out know, tomorrow. Piggybacking off of what you're saying, like I, I believe, again, this is just a personal view of the, the left and liberal um, – narrative has a has has a lot to do or i should say is is associated a lot with personal feelings as opposed to logic and i'm not saying that condescendingly i'm because there's a lot of things a lot of ideology i what am i trying to go with it there's a lot of ideologies from the left that i actually agree with in theory but not practically meaning you know, if if the country itself said, "Hey, you know what? We're going to become this big loving country, and everybody's going to love each other, and we're going to get rid of guns, and da 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 da, and we're going to change the country," con- like that's actually a good thing, I think, for humankind. Will that ever happen? No. So therefore, like, listen, there's always going to be guns because we have a constitution. Like, there's just certain things. There's never going to be a point where racism is done. There's never going to be a point where people, everybody, all. Uh, ethnicities and cultures get along and everybody's you know right. it just it's well, there could be you just, no it, there, there, there can be there, it, it requires a lot of population control in the sense of there's too many people for it to happen that would never happen it right. could happen if there was a few enough pe- amount of people I saw some qu- crazy quotes if there, about it, the hold guy. on if there are Sorry. five if there are five people on an island only right. five is it possible for them to all like each other and but that's not impractical have, to th- think to right. apply to a you know I'm just saying it could happen society of it seven. just has to do with the amount of people you know there's too many people I was gonna say you know I heard getting back or to the, the guns so. part I heard a quote that there's something like 10 times the amount of guns in the United States than there is people <laughs> yeah so, we actually looked at yeah, that up based one time. on something like that it's it's physically impossible to get rid of all of them it right. just would never work you know there's a lot of things you know you're talking about times and changes that I would love to see, but I don't think we'll see it in our lifetime. Right. I, You know, and that's where kids. both sides, you know, you have bipartisan agreement to some degree. In theory, everybody wants to get along. Sure. Nobody wants mass shootings. Nobody right, right. wants, you know, to see, uh, you know, it's the extremes of the parties that kind of fuck everything up. Like, nobody's necessarily 100% against, you know, uh, social programs. Everybody wants to help everybody, I think. 
nobody wants anybody to take advantage of it. You know, and that's where you start going into the extremes and everybody's going, oh, man, you're, you're fucked up and blah, 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 blah. I don't know. I, I just look at it like I, I think we're all we're all human. We all have this. We all want the same thing. It's just how we go about it. Yep. And then the, the, the fringes, the extremes on both sides, those are the people that we need to really get rid of. You know, I, I lean right. I'm not a fucking skinhead. I, I'm not part of the KKK. And and I you know what I say? Fuck those people. Too, even though they probably associate with you know my side more so than let's say the left. That's just me. I will second that statement. I agree with you. Yeah. You know, people say, "Oh, you love Trump. Why you love Trump?" I don't specifically agree with everything <laughs> Trump has said or ever done. Right. I think even most people that voted for him or that like him wish he'd stay off Twitter. There's a bunch of things we change. But yeah. He's ultimate, unpolished. He's you know. Of course, but his ultimate. Um, the things that he wants in life, I think, are good things. And the changes he wants to see, I think, will better our children in the future. And that's why I support his views. And I support my president, whoever that is. If Hillary was my president, I'd have no choice. I would have had to support them. It's the people that don't support them. That's, like, anti-American to me. You should always right. back your president. I think that come, like to an extent, I, I, mean, I agree with you because I, I voted for Trump. Um, and I think that a lot of what he wants to accomplish, you know, his ultimate goal and his vision of what this great country of what this country should be to make it great again i don't think there's anything wrong with his vision of it because i don't think his vision is to be you know racist with no immigrants and anything like that yeah, that's just the i think it's I th- yeah, yeah i think it's to be as safe as possible and have americans feel that it's prosperous to be here you know like you have an opportunity to do whatever you want and that opportunity is really there so i think uh, the foundation of his you know goal of his goals are are good and i support that but like you said you know there's a lot of dumb shit that he says and does where i'm like what an idiot you know what i mean like of course yeah. and i i have a lot of knucklehead friends man that won't that will blindly support anything he does and anybody that opposes something that he does you know the trump supporters that i know will usually blindly defend him and that's where i think come on don't be an idiot you right know? and i don't think that you should support every president you know just because they're the president that's kind of what this country is based on. You know, you don't have to support him. You don't have to respect him. If you feel strongly enough against what he's doing, I think it's okay to speak out and not be on board with it. Well, you know, as long as it's done nonviolently and you're not breaking any laws. But, like, I don't, I think it's stupid to want him to fail. Yeah, I'm not, I'm yeah. not suggesting that right. you want yeah. him to fail that's and say, anti-American. just so you can say, ha ha, I told you so. I knew it. I was right. No, it's like th- that stupid analogy where it's like, hey, man, if you think the pilot of the plane you're in is an asshole, you don't want him to crash the plane. You know, like you're still on the ship. You should want him to succeed and prove you wrong. You know what exactly. I mean? Like the people that are like waiting for him to fail and like salivating and drooling at the opportunity or the, you know, the thought of him fucking something up. I think they're idiots. You know, there are but, people, you know, as a valid point, there are people that are still on my Facebook feed that still post anti Trump stuff every day. Like, get over <laughs> two and a two years later, you're still yeah. upset. Like, I don't get that. And same same analogy. If Hillary was in office, I'm not going to be posting funny stuff about her two years later. Like you got to get over it. I find that the those people that are still posting those anti-Trump, uh, the rhetoric, the memes, and all that stuff. I, you know, they they so. I find that those people, the majority of those people, if I know them, they make decisions based on their feelings and their emotions and stuff they read. Not again. Not whether it's good or bad. It's just how it makes them feel. Yes. And I'm like, you know, how do you live? And, and, and I mean, maybe it's 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 a. I always use this word, a microcosm of society. Uh, if you're if you go through your whole life making decisions based on how it makes you feel, boy, are you fucking delusional. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm serious. He's because that's point. not how real life works it's not how it meaning there's things that happen in life that regardless of how you feel it's gonna happen death Mm. you know what i'm saying so like i'm looking at you know when my father passed away i could have totally ran with my feelings and been like oh fuck the world's coming to an end my dad's you know that's not how you operate. Right. Shit's gonna happen in life presidents are gonna be elected that you don't like uh you're gonna you're gonna have to eat some shit sandwiches sometimes from your boss uh you, you know there's just certain things that if you if you're if you're committed in a relationship you're gonna have to bend they're gonna do things that you don't like i mean it's just constant in life you know that you're regardless of how you feel 
it's going to happen, and you're going to have to make a logical decision. You're going to have to put your emotions aside. I mean, not everything. I'm just saying, you know, you have the choice, depending on how you feel, where you're going to go eat and, you know, that kind of thing. But when you're talking about national security, you're talking about millions of people's lives. Like, I don't give a fuck how you feel about it. Threat is real. And if we're not, you know, if we're not on top, let's say globally, if we're not on the top, that means somebody else is. And you know what they would do to us? Even if we were second, they would fucking strong arm our country. And that, you know, the whole, I mean, there's a, just a domino effect of, you know, things that could happen. I'm, I don't want to sit here and go if, if, if. But. I have a build the wall story, if I may. Did you have something to add? No, go ahead. Oh, go okay. Ahead. So I have Taking a perfect example of something that nobody sees that actually, you know, hits home for me. I have a cousin that met an Irish immigrant. He came over here, let's say, 10 or 12 years ago, had a little work visa or whatever, overstayed it. So now he's in the country illegally. This dude has been working here for 12 fucking years, working an under-the-table job, getting paid good money, $1,200, $1,300, doing construction, cash under the table every week. And that's great, you know. But that's not great. No, no, I'm that's... saying that's great money. I was going to say that's great money to make. Yes, un- it's great money, but that's a perfect example of, you know, he's here illegally. He's making crazy money, but he's also taking away jobs. For somebody else that could... Absolutely. absolutely. So getting rid of these problems now secures a future for our children so that this doesn't happen, so that my daughter, your sons, whatever, can have jobs, pay their taxes. Think about it. He hasn't paid any taxes. He's here illegally dating her, got a house, the whole nine, does all this shit, doesn't pay a dollar in taxes, and like boasts about it. Yeah. That's the shit that pisses me off. That's why we need border control. Absolutely. 150%. You have anything to weigh on that? No. No? I, you know, I, I look at it this way. I mean, it, it's not about whether we're empathetic to somebody's situation. Sometimes you just can't help people. Meaning, you know what? I have, right now I have one vehicle, and it's an older vehicle. I, I still drive it around. I, I'm going to run it into the ground. If somebody said to me, hey, Jay, I really need to go to Florida. Can I take your truck? I'm like, no, I'm sorry. I can't risk the fact that... Of it breaking down, you driving all the way to Florida, you know, that whole thing, because I, I I have my own shit I need to take care of. I'm empathetic to your situation. I understand that you need to get somewhere. Uh, but it would kind of be counterproductive if now we both don't have a vehicle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because my shit. Point. Yeah, you know, so like I'm empathetic to the people that are trying to come into the country and they want a better life for themselves and their family, but you're not doing it at my expense. You know right. what I'm saying? Do it the right way. I'm yeah, all for anybody exactly. coming here the right way. Pay taxes. You know, he should have gone home. He should have, you know, got his shit straight, got his visa, good, you know, come back again, pay taxes, come here, marry my cousin. Do they what chose, you got to do, yeah. yeah. They chose just, to do the illegal thing and get a lawyer. And, and I always put it, it in short. I say, why sneak through the window when the door is open? Just come in. You got to yes, come through the front absolutely. door. You don't have to sneak through the window. I so, that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's my spiel on, on border security and blah, blah, blah. But going back to M. <laughs> hey, fuck M. Nah. <laughs> I still respect his talent. I, I mean, he's a great, great entertainer, too. He's funny. He's a great actor. I'd love he, to meet him. He's like number one on my list. I yeah. He, he's like the Justin Timberlake almost of, of hip hop. You know, like he can act. He can he can, uh, he can rap. He, he can, can dance. Act. Oh, can he dance? I've never seen M dance. No, I don't know. Justin Timberlake is not the greatest actor, though. <laughs> He's not. The, but he, you know, when you consider people that are known for their singing, mm. he, he, I mean, he's... He's well, Justin, Justin like pushes Wolf. the envelope on the comedy side. I think M does it on the music side, too. So anybody yeah. that's willing to do that right on the fringe, you know, controversy, people love that. Shit sells. I think I saw you you put something, uh, one of the, you know, our talking points, is, uh, something about incest. What was that all about? What that, the hell? Yeah, no, it was like what the know, hell did I, I come I don't know here what for? Talking about <laughs> to be <laughs> you honest, do, with like you. Utah or Idaho or Utah or whatever. What? <laughs> what was that? Can, can we turn oh, the page? Man. It's on you, bro. Well, how do you feel about incest? Well, no, that was. I'm, I'm assuming there was a story. Associated. How do you feel about incest? That's a direct. What do you mean question. how I feel about it? How do you feel about it? I think it's great. Back up off the mic. Check oh, please. <laughs> no doubt. Check, hey, uh, I, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, continue. Oh, I was going to say, when it comes to... I'm going to pose a question here. <laughs> when it comes to marriage, do you think it's wrong, or should it be illegal for a brother to marry sister? Illegal? No. I mean, I don't I don't think the government should have much say in who Why you decide to... Why do you have that look on to, your face, George? <laughs> I just, you know, like, I don't think the government should have much say in who you decide to marry. I don't think it should be, a, a like, a legal term. 
And I know there's a difference between like loving and having a relationship or m- being married technically on paper for So you're saying that tax brothers should be allowed whatever. to marry your sister? Listen, do I think it's fucking weird? Of course, yeah, but I don't think they should legally be, be legally be stopped from doing that. I gotta kind of agree with that. I, you know, because ultimately, know. what what's the risk? The risk is, I would say, probably them fucking and having children. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah, probably talking about chromosomes, possible. Yeah, and again, I, I'm not yeah. a doctor. I my stance, I, I've had the same stance on this probably since I was fucking 15 years old. We can get into it, but. I think the before we get into that, what Jay was talking about is I want to say George in Utah, um, a couple that is cousin. So a man married his cousin, and I think the state is giving them shit about it. It's probably gonna be a lot of different. You don't have it up. We've been talking about it for fucking two. Just minutes go in already. your favorites, George. And <laughs> <laughs> but where do you draw the line? You know, can you, can you marry your daughter? Can like, you marry please. your horse? You know, like I feel like you kind of have to draw the line legally. Well, that what, what you just said are two well, extremely different things. Hold on, uh, your daughter and your horse. Now you're talking about a different species. You know, an animal what difference can't, does it make? An animal can't consent to marrying you. Okay. You know, your fine. adult daughter. But, could. No, but couldn't you That's articulate a huge difference. that your your so if it's based off of love, couldn't you articulate that my pet loves me? Uh, again, your your daughter can definitively communicate that she's consenting to marrying you the horse can't so you could never Good ever point. say i don't know maybe uh, i'm I asking think, I'm yeah just well, i think we're just going way too deep there's about eight different articles of different cases and everything it's basically yeah it's father, not it's not too uncommon there was a father and a daughter and then there was a mom who married her son oh so it does happen and jesus then the son married the other daughter after yeah was, you know they told me come on the j2 podcast it'll be fun they said yeah <laughs> what the fuck am <laughs> i doing West here Virginia. <laughs> He just stumbled across an article about Jay Goodwin. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, no, 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 stop searching that right now. (laughs) Yeah, let's talk about polka after incest. So hold on. Just just for clarification, so it actually does happen in this country then. Oh, of course. Commonly. Nothing surprises me. It's not uncommon at all. That that brother so family members marry other family members it's literally a joke for like west virginia yeah that type of area <laughs> oh I, I didn't know that it was that common like yeah, yeah it's pretty common it happens it's like i'll always i think it's hilarious when i see a meme of like just a smoking hot chick and the words would be like god damn look at that ass her cousins are so lucky <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you based off of that using that logic should it be okay then that let's say I mean, I'm 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 kind of just throwing situations out of here just for food for thought. For let's say an 18 year old to marry a 15 year old. Now you're getting into ages. Um. Well, yeah, I mean, because like, isn't I mean, if we if so, if we're saying that love is love regardless of the sources. Rice is rice. Rice is rice. No, if we're saying that love is love, I say no based on like mental capabilities. You are much more mature, 16, 18, 20 than you are at. Eight, nine, ten. But could so, you also yeah, argue also that much mature eight, eight, nine, ten versus five, six, seven? You can argue that for any like age gap. You know? Yeah, but I think there's laws in place. Like that's why we don't give our driver's license at ten years old. I mean, uh, we can they not mm-hmm. reach the pedals, but you know the maturity of being able to handle you know a vehicle and, and stuff like that. True. So one thing I always like to. Anytime we're, I'm talking about my opinion and how I feel about something, whether it's right or wrong, yeah, I I try to remove the fact that it's a law altogether because that is no relevance to me because law doesn't equal morality. You know what I mean? It's very it's a, true. It, it's a law is just a law. Laws change, and a law doesn't make it right. You know, like it's just a law. Or and wrong. It, yeah, a right or it's just a law. You know, it's an agreed upon rule for now based right. on what we think and what we know. Um, because to, like I'm kind of torn like. And again, I'm not saying I want to go fuck little girls or anything like that, but the the age of consent that somebody's able to have sex and to where having sex would be a crime to me is stupid. Because and it's different for every state, too. Right. Well, that's saying that's that right. tonight, if these two kids, you know, 19 and 17 or whatever the age is, have sex, this dude is going to jail. But if they wait a few hours till technically it's March 7th, it's it's okay. It's we're okay with this now because it's a few hours later. I think it's where Jay was saying. You know what I'm saying? Draw like, a line somewhere. Yeah, but and but earlier he the, mentioned the, the beautiful. Th- I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but it yeah. almost feels like, do you? Because nature and biology draws that line for us. You know, there's a a point in your life. You know, there's part of your life where your dick doesn't get hard. You know, your body is not ready for sex. Then, 
boom. All of a sudden, your dick's not ever not hard. You know what I mean? Like you're hiding it with books when you go to fucking whiteboard. <laughs> and for a woman, it's the same thing. You know, minus the dick and the hard part. You know, like there's a at, is that how that works? A part of their life, dude, like that body is just never ready to have sex. And then boom, before you know it, something happens. Now they're fucking lubricated. Like their body is saying, okay, you're ready for this. So to me, it always seemed weird that the the government stepped in and said, we're going to dictate this. You know, even though your body is completely ready to have sex, we're telling you it's not legal until you're this year's I old. I think it's a maturity thing, like you I know? said. But getting back to what Jay said originally, you're talking about like a brother marrying a sister. Yeah. Love is different. I got no problem with anybody loving each other. You bring sex in, now I'm all the you. red flags come out. Yeah. Yep. Anybody and anything can love any object or person. I'm okay with that. The so sex part's a whole nother game. Why? Again, we talk. You get into different chromosomes, retardation. Retardation. You're talking about yeah, like you know, it, our bodies aren't bred to mix the same with the same. It can create some so pretty uh, dire consequences. So there's a higher risk for birth defects. I believe I'm not a right. That, that's I think that's yeah. a general. I'm going to use the word misconception lightly because I think there is a higher risk, but I think that risk is so insignificant that it's not a valid argument to have against that. I think it's just a taboo kind of thing where people are like, ew, that's gross. Sure, so can you look up like what's the difference, you know, like what that risk is if you're fucking a family member that your kid's gonna come out with more arms or whatever. <laughs> you know, I, I again let's I, take it's the a, conversation uh, maybe a step further too. Like Well let's figure this out for Well he's he, and while he's doing that, <laughs> let's say like you want if I wanted to marry my brother, Jeff, I don't want to marry you. But I'm just saying if I if I wanted to, should the law stop me from doing that? God, fucking it ain't my business, man. You give a fuck who you marry. I don't know if I have an opinion on that. It, so, uh, okay. That, to me, that seems normal. Like, yeah, dude, who the fuck cares? Like, who you marry? Like, it doesn't matter who you marry. Yeah, the marriage is a paper. And nowadays, you can call Justin a piece. He'll come over tonight. I'll you marry you, you right now. Right. I'll like, marry you on the podcast right. right now, bro. I swear to God, if you're watching, who wants to see me and Jay get married? Uh, ding, I do not consent. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Cons- well, consent is... Uh, I, I think... Was- you know, and, and I'm ignorant to the beginnings, you know, the origin of marriage, whether if it was, um, is, has it always been a legality? Has it been a sacred thing? Has it been, you know, because like you're, you're, you look at the Catholic Church and, every, you know, I don't want to express my views right now about the Catholic Church per se, but, you know, they would have, one, they're very influential, you know, they influence a lot of people and they would have something Little to boys. say. I guess about let's say brother marrying marrying brother. That's I mean they would affect billions of people. That would be like, nah, dude, that's not cool. I feel like if you you know it's just about drawing the line. If you if you draw the line somewhere, it puts a stance and says, okay, this is where we're at. If not, you're right. It just opens the floodgates for anything and everything. And marrying your dog and marrying yeah, like I said, it could just become. I think some worse. bitch somewhere married a rock or something. Yeah, and I'm, I and I'm not for against shit. anything, anybody. Like I'm. I just I'm feel very like how do you mar- how do you marry? Like how does a rock consent? How does anything <laughs> consent other than a human? I feel like it's just like, whatever, dude. Well, if an two, animal can if consent. If two, sure. If two people consent and they're okay and they say, "Yeah, I'm agreeing to marry you," like whatever, dude. I don't right, give a go fuck. For it. Yeah, you know what I mean. As long as you do the same things that I would have to do if I married my wife, I don't know what that. You know, like how you file your taxes. As long as you're not breaking any laws, like I'm sure. cool with that. And as long as fucking I agree with those laws, because I'm cool with breaking some laws anyway. <laughs> interesting. Uh, very, very yeah. interesting. Did you find out the statistics on... Yeah, it doesn't have a statistic. It just says that there's 13 genetic mutations that can arise from incest. Does, it doesn't say how likely they are? I mean, I, you can definitely find it somewhere. Well, mutations yeah. happen naturally anyway. And here's, even though? if it was increased more, right? The the part of... What are the, you the, the part of that that makes me... <laughs> no, the... Um, excuse me, guys. Tech, you got me. You're co- recording me right now, right? All right? I want everybody to see this. Part what? And we're back. So, <laughs> no. Um, when you use the argument of, let's say that it was, there's an increased chance of a birth defect. Do you think that should affect whether or not a cousin is married, is allowed to marry or have sex with their cousin? Absolutely. Yeah. You do. So the problem that I have with that is, to me, that's devaluing a life that just has a condition. You know what I mean? Because if you see, say they have an increased, increased risk for autism. You're saying that these pe- two people shouldn't be allowed to fuck because there's a higher chance that that baby has autism. Yeah. Well, I think that's ridiculous, man, because right now, if a human has autism, we're not 
discounting them. We're not saying, hey, let's get rid of them. We're not saying they shouldn't exist. You know, it's just a possibility. And it ha if it happens, it happens. And there's still people. But if you, you, know? you knew your chances were extremely high for something really bad to happen and that kid would have an abnormal life, wouldn't you want to do something to change that or stop it? That's Maybe, but that's not that's my choice. That's not the government's choice. Sure, sure, yeah. Because we're allowing the government to just slaughter our babies anyway. You know what I mean? So, I, like, who the fuck are they to say that I shouldn't be able to decide if I want to have an autistic baby? You know, it's like fucking, you're telling me that, you know, I don't have the choice to, to make whether or not I want to get pregnant or get this girl pregnant. And what you just said, you know, a high risk, it's not even high risk. It's very, very insignificant. But even if it was high risk, I still feel like nobody should be intervening with that. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I'm deaf... And my girlfriend is deaf. Should the government be allowed to step in and say, "Hey, we can't reproduce because it's the baby's chance of being deaf or higher"? You have some valid points. If I'm that. autistic and my wife is autistic, should the government be allowed to say, "Hey, because now that's actually way more high of a risk than if it was my cousin"? You know, if I'm autistic and my wife's autistic, that this baby's going to have autism. Actually, you know, I believe that very, 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 very few ailments and diseases are hereditary so I, i'm not sure that i mean you know you like go to genetic? your doctor or, yeah that you go to your doctor they ask you if you have histories of x y and z if if my research is is correct now obviously i'm reading obvi other people's uh george can you see that like other people's opinions and narratives on the subjects professionals experts considered whatever blah blah, blah that there's there there aren't a lot of diseases that are hereditary. I think there are. I think there's probably more than either well, of us realizes. I'm, and, I, and I'm I'm saying that, that and that's according to uh, some geneticists that I I was recently researching. They you know they say that no that that's all. all so bullshit. name name one that is. Well, I I, I that's the thing. I I, I don't gotcha. I don't I don't. I'm out on this one. I have zero opinion. Yeah. Well, that that's always been my opinion. Is you know like if two consenting people want to fuck like it's not my business to tell them that they can't i don't think anybody should tell them that they can't you know and if there's a, a higher risk for the the human being that's going to be born to have a birth defect it is what it is you know what i mean like that we don't devalue that person's life because there's something different with them you know I, and i find that do. to you i don't you, you don't know, i don't all think right, that so, we should well, uh, well hold on i'm not finished because well, let me I, ask you well, hold really on fast, i'm not finished well you stated well, the point yeah and i'm still making that point i know and, but before i forget bro no dude let me finish my point <laughs> would you want your child to be autistic in the very sense that is that a um, yes or a no i'm not answering that question yet because I'm, I'm gonna finish saying what i was saying <laughs> <laughs> so now i can't even fucking remember ding, what ding, i was saying ding, you round asshole. one Hold on. Let me backtrack my thoughts for a second. What was I saying? Well, because I, I forget it. That's why I had to interject really fast. It's just a yes or no way. It's a yes or no question. I don't care what oh, anybody does you. behind closed doors. Exactly. What always got to me is, you know, for, for example, what you're saying right now is, yes, that should be a factor in whether or not we allow them to reproduce. It always made me, my mind boggles when I meet somebody that is pro-life, meaning they don't they're not in support of abortion. They don't think abortion should be legal. They think that it's wrong because it's killing human being. But the whole, you know, concept of that is, you know, pro-life. You know, that's what it's called. But you can be anti-life if that baby has a chance of having a birth defect. To me, that, that doesn't make sense. To your answer, would I, if I had the choice of my son having autism or not, are you saying that if a doctor said, hey, I can give you this pill and your son will have autism, would I take the pill? Of course not. That's silly. But if he had autism, I wouldn't think of, I would, there's, it wouldn't affect the way Why? I care Why about him Why would you choose one over the other? If, um, if you're not devaluing in any sense of the word, mm. why would you choose one over the other? Just because it would be easier for him. So, that, so aren't you devaluing? That's a choice, yeah. You just, yeah, but here's the thing. If there's a test that you can take when you're pregnant and you're expecting a baby, a test that you can take to know whether or not your child has an increased chance of I having autism. Now, yeah. Oh, I'm telling you there are. Like, yeah. I had two two kids, you know. So the doctor will come in and say, do you want to run this test? I say, what is that test for? So you know whether or not, you know, and I think the words they used were early enough. You know early enough whether or not your child is going to have autism. I'm like, no, we don't need that fucking test. You know, because I'm just like, we don't need that test at all. Because no matter what, that no matter what, out. yeah, no, it doesn't matter. What am sure. I going to do? What sure. am I going to do? Go fucking buy an autism proof house. Like the baby's going to come out and I'm going to care for it and we'll take it as we go. You know, it's all you can do is naturally. Yeah, that's what I'm value saying. 
Oh, no, life. that's not what I'm saying. Well, no, I, I think we naturally do through all kinds of ailments. Like, I wouldn't want my daughter to have been born retarded or a quadriplegic or, a, you know. And it's any, great that we have these tests now that you can to determine this stuff ahead of time. And it's not saying that, you know, that because, let's say, someone's child is autistic or is, let's say, a quadriplegic or, or is a whatever, they suffer from what, whatever they do. We're not saying that they don't mean anything. It's just but there's, there is a natural kind of devalue. Yeah, if we, all had, sense. The, if we all had the choice, we'd yeah, probably. Yeah, exactly. That's, it, I guess it, that's it what may I'm sound saying. harsh, but I think it's realistic to say, what's the first thing you do when you have a new baby? Count the fingers, count the toes. Why do you do that? You want to make sure they're all there. You want to make sure the baby's happy and healthy and right. normal. normal. You know, there, there's a longing we all crave, I think, for, like, normality when we have kids, for for them to Absolutely. feel it anyway. But then it's crazy because as they grow up, you don't want them to be normal. You kind of want to encourage them to stand Unique. out right. and, you know, express themselves freely. You know, and if my son wants a blue mohawk and, you know, I'm cool with that. Let do whatever him, yeah. he wants. Your hair. Now, if you want to turn into a woman and shave your head blue and then scream at the top of your lungs with all... I don't want you to do all that. There's a limit to how much you should yes. express yourself, bro. Yes. Like, don't be that lady that was crying in that video when Trump got elected. You know, with the fucking yellow reflector vest on <laughs> yeah, and the, yeah. you know, the lesbian haircut. They made a ton of memes about the that. lesbian I, haircut. I don't know. It's a joke. Don't kill me for that. <laughs> so, Jay, there's some interesting things about you <laughs> and, I mean, and your life for personally. That. Yeah, yes, probably. Yes. Um, I love. I lesbians. understand that you wrote a book. I did write a book. About Can four you tell years us a little ago? about that? The name of the book is called Evil, E-V-O-L. Yeah. Um, it's obviously love spelled backwards. Oh, shit. It's a self-published book, which means I wrote it, and then I paid a company a couple hundred bucks to make me, you know, 150 copies or whatever, and then I gave that's them out to family and friends. Yeah. Nice. That's pretty cool. I didn't even know that was an option. Like, what was the, the the premise of the book? Like, So it's it's... It's a 100% true story based on my life and true love that, you know, that I found. I met this girl. I'll give you the short version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Met this girl um, when we were growing up. I think we were in third or fourth grade. Um, you know, kind of had a thing for her back then when it was cool to school dances. And, you know what I mean? You you meet the girl. You pass notes in the hallway. That was that puppy dog love. Did you there. like me? Check one. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes, yes. Or do you so, like me? <laughs> she moved away for a few years, and I had kind of forgotten about her. And then uh, we kind of reconnected through some mutual friends on Facebook and uh, you know I, I asked her out a couple of times she said no I kept trying again she finally said so yes so wh- where is this in your life right now like is this a couple so, years ago is this uh, yeah so I okay. wrote it four years ago and this was at the end of the breakup right so right after the breakup I started to write the book it was great therapy for me yeah absolutely writing is man I'm telling you I was in a low place guys like before you know you met me um, you know where I work and whatnot. Man, I almost didn't make it. That's how bad that this book helped me get through. Damn. Was it because of the heartbreak or was it because of just that on top of, let's say, everything else? No, I never had much, you know, much going on in my life as far as heartache. But um, definitely, yeah, I think I let myself get too involved, you know, almost to the point where you were just blinded. You just, you know, you're waving something in front of your face and people, you, you're just blinded by love. What, what was it mm. about her that... That ass. <laughs> that ass. <is. laughs> Um, man, uh, not to take anything away from her. She was she was perfect. She was just just everything. I, the beauty was second to none. Um, you know, she had everything. She had a, you know her own place, her her own car. She had a, she had two two kids. It was just it was just a perfect picture. You know what I mean? But the you know the beauty and the attraction and the we had tons of stuff in common. And you know we would laugh and we would have some heartfelt moments. And am I out of line if I ask you what you happened? Can ask me anything you want. No, absolutely no. Um, Man, I guess it boils down to who Let's open up this wound. Yeah, who you ask, I guess. (laughs) Um, So uh, I said a phrase one time when she was talking about her kids that rubbed her the wrong way. This was in a telephone conversation. Like, fuck those little kids. No, no, not at all. She was complaining about. She was a runner. She was very in shape. She was complaining about not being able to run. And so, um, you know. George? Her kids were older. So I didn't understand. Her kids were, I think, at the time, 12 and 10 or something like that, or 13 and Let 9. me interrupt for one second. Sure. Are you an opinionated kind of guy, meaning, like, do you, do you always offer your opinion? That's that's me. I always do. Sometimes I'm out of line. Sometimes, you know. I'm, I, just... I'm not one of those persons, but okay, I don't care right. if somebody asks me anything. All yeah, right, go ahead, go ahead. I'm just time, so. curious. Sorry. Yeah, so at one point, you know, I had, uh, she was complaining about not being able to run, not being able to exercise, 
you know, and uh, I, I kind of question, like, you know, they're old enough, why, why aren't they able to stay home by themselves? Like, don't let your kids dictate your life like that. That's right. And that rubbed her the wrong way. That totally, like, she thought I was telling her what to do and how to raise her kids. And, and I didn't that's, a, that's a sensitive thing. Well, that, you know, did you talk about people's kids. say it like Absolutely. that, though? Because I, I feel like... Did you say it that way, or did you say, like, well, hey, bitch, stop babying the kids? No, I didn't say it in a negative way. The crazy part was I had never met her kids. Yeah. Seen pictures, heard about them. Oh, she wow. She talked about them all the time. Yeah, we How long were you for two like, together? It was only, like, four months. Four months oh, wow, during this see. period of time, but going back on Do you fall hard? Years, you yeah. fell damn four hard, months. bro. There's a lot I'm oh, not telling you this. Okay, all right, I'm yeah, sorry. I backtrack. So four it, months? I feel like I Listen to this. Listen to this crazy way we met. Crazy way, right? So we reconnect on Facebook only yeah. after 20-something years, right? And I finally get her to say, yeah, I'll go on a date with you. I set this date up a month and a half in advance. Okay. You were excited. You were just... Absolutely. And this yeah. was the date of all dates. I dropped like $500 on this date. Wow. Between like... Car you were trying show, to make it perfect. Dinner. You were trying to wifey her up like in that night. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, Jay, Jay does nothing but the best. That's a red flag <laughs> though. And she's like, all right, I'll go on a date with you, but a month and a half from now. Well, it was that I had bought tickets to the show. It was a Cirque du Soleil show. Oh, shit. So, he just fucked you up. <laughs> <laughs> so here's Guy, the crazy Guy part. Liberty show? I said, let's do something different. I said Guy to her, let's, let's rewrite history. She said, what are you talking about? I said, let's try something different. Let's not see each other and not talk to each other until that day. Let's make 20 years come to that day. So we talked in text every day, thousands and thousands of texts for that month and a half, two month period until we yeah. went on that date. W weren't you afraid of losing a connection? Especially Never. through it text. It got stronger, it got better. Never. Really? Nope. One time we broke our Did rule. you guys sext each other? Uh, we got a little flirty. <laughs> Get a little flirty. I don't no know about dick pics say. back in the day. Yeah, no, I don't think I'd send that. Yeah, that's another thing too. We said no pictures. We wouldn't send each other pictures or nothing. Oh, all right, all right. So um, you guys had Facebook, right? Like you weren't getting catfished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, all we right, had Facebook. Cool. Yeah, yeah. We made a point. She made a point from that point on to not post pictures. So didn't I? So we just right. had what we had seen from the past and what we had in our heads to go on. So yeah. from not seeing her from fourth grade until twenty something years later, I showed up and then picked her up on that date. But it was great. It was it was wonderful in between there. Wow. I actually have another quick, you know, the ladies are going to love this love story about if you never read the book. We don't really have many lady listeners. Wait, can, we're going to get some. <laughs> no, hey, go ahead, can people, do, do people have access to this book or no? So the book, I don't think I have any hard copies left. I might be able to dig some out of a he closet. He said hard. <laughs> um, it is digital download. Like I can send it to people, but it's oh, right. not That's on a website for that's sale. Legit. Yeah, that's probably the way most people read today. Anyway. Yeah, I can send it to anybody. Kindle and so all that it's bullshit. Still a digital copy, but I still appreciate a good old paper book. One day we decided to break our rules of not seeing each other. Right. So she was at work. I was. How close was this to the day that you guys were? We were still three weeks out, probably. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Halfway yeah. through. So this is kind of romantic. So. I would always joke when I was near her work because I was the delivery delivering parts at the time. Yeah. So I said, oh, I'm near you. And she said, I dare you to come by. And I said, are you serious? She said, yeah. I said, okay, I got one rule for you. We cannot say a word. She said, okay. I said, you're going to give me a kiss? She said, absolutely. Pulled into her work, texted her. Again, we're going back 20 years. I ain't seen mm. this chick. She comes outside. I open my door, step out of the truck. I gave her the most passionate kiss. My heart was jumping out of my chest. <laughs> We never said a word. We kissed for about 30 seconds. Dick's getting hard. Yeah. And I just left her and that was it. And she was like, oh my, my fucking wet. God. Like, I think I'm in love. Like, it was that powerful. She said. You thought that or she thought that? Or I, th I think we both felt okay, that. Okay, right. Yeah. My heart was beating out of my chest. I had never felt a love mm. like that. That's how I knew that I was in love with her. When right. was this? How, how long ago was this? For the second time, four years ago. Four years ago. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. I've been married, and I was married before that. Sometimes that bond like between, that. like, customer and strippers, they're, they're you know, strong. <laughs> <laughs> nah, she's, no, kidding, she's, she's like, all right, girl. I'm yeah, coming she, outside. She, she worked she at a hospital, the yeah. She got with the heels. She was a good girl, but, um, yeah, so I, I knew at that moment, like, my heart was, like, to the point, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. That's how much, like, wow. even she said, you, you might need to come to the hospital because, like, your heart's beating so fast. Are you okay? And I think that was the moment I knew that I was in love. Wow. And I hadn't seen this chick in 20 years. Mm. So. And it lasted four months. So, so then what happened? But, what, but what, that four months could be the equivalent of somebody else's 10 years, you know? Like it, exactly. It's a good four months. And the book I, I is writing about, like, true love and how it's accessible and, and able for everybody out there. And everybody has their own form of finding it. 
I knew that I found it. Right. I had dated 20, 30 women before then. I had, I had been married before then. Right. I never had that strong feeling that at connection. that point. Yes, that I felt there. And that's yeah. what I knew what love really is. So wow. what happened, I made that comment. So we go on our date. We had a couple more dates. We slept together. We had a good time in that couple-month period. He um, hit that. <laughs> uh, yeah, sex was incredible. I mean, I, I can't take nothing away from her. Um, and then, you know, I made that comment about her kids. Like, don't let your kids dictate your life. Like... I mean, if my daughter's old enough and I think she's mature enough, I'm going to let her stay home alone while I go run an errand to Walmart. I'm not going to let That her. seems kind of petty. Yeah. And, and, and mm. I wish there was more to it, you know. So since then. That's it. That's kind of it. We had a little argument. She let it go for a couple of days. Thought everything was better. Went to make plans with her. She dissed me once. Went to make plans a week later. She dissed me again. And then I finally called her out and said, what's going on? And she's like, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can get over that statement. And I was like. Is that what she said? Wow, really? Yeah. Did she get? Um, did she uh, end up getting back with the father of her kids after that? No, not that I know of. No, no. Gotcha. and I questioned all that. I questioned. Gotcha. Are you guys friends today? No, we're not. There's Hell a little, no. There's dude. a little after story that happened. Oh shit! Ding ding. So yeah, the after story is um. So after the book gets published and the copies are out, she somehow gets a hold of one. Two weeks later, whatever. Was she pissed off? Um, like the fl- only way she I knew flattered. that she. Flattered. Yeah. The only way I knew she heard about it is when the police knocked on my door. What? Yes. <laughs> like, the only way I knew she knew about it is when the police handcuffed me because I'm outside her window. So uh, I'm at work. At the time, I was I was renting my house out back living at my mom's. I'm at work, and my mom calls me. And she says, where are you at? The police are here. I said, what? So she puts the police on the phone, and they said, we're here to seize your guns. And I said, what's going on? And they said, we have a restraining order on behalf of this girl. I don't want to say her name. Yeah, yeah, no, no. And so, a bitch, uh, dude. Sorry. Yeah, so I said, really? What? So it took me a day. I had to go home and, and, and you know, get the guns, give it to them. And I had some other guns in another place in another town. I had to give them to the police, too. And uh, basically what, what I understand what happened was. Just she, because of a restraining order. Yeah, she attempted at that point to get a restraining order on me. When I finally read the restraining order, it said that based on the comments in the book, that and I quote from the book, this quote, I quote it in the book, she talked about her kids so much, I felt like they were my own. That was the only quote in the book. Now, I have never met, even to this day, hands of God, I've never met her kids. She said that that was a threat on their lives. I thought That's her wild. kids were my own, that that was a threat on her lives. That's wild. Hey, if you're watching, fuck you. <laughs> That's wild. It's pretty grimy. So I feel like what's really terrible about that too is if you if you were not over like I'm I'm gonna just use the, the D word here. If you're not over like I'm assuming you were depressed, you know, after that breakup. That sounds like a depressing Absolutely. kind of time. Absolutely. You really cared about her. But if you weren't over that, f- to find out that she read it and that, you know, she had the effect of like or she had the reaction to just call the police on you that can't feel good either man like fuck yeah this is what i surmise happened i i don't know but i assume she went to the police station to say you know hey somebody wrote a book about me and it's you know there's some damaging shit in here um well, damaging I, that doesn't sound damaging I, I also wrote a whole chapter on our sex life oh but did you ever <laughs> name her in the book so here's the thing you never there's named a, her in there's the a book, ton right? of people mentioned by name in the book but they're all first names i never mentioned anybody's last name you never mentioned her first and last name address no just her first name yeah so fuck fuck you it's lady like like, bob there's a thousand hundred million bobs so in this world how okay so how does somebody associate that to you're talking about me right you're so, talking about you right well, so probably, so Sorry, they probably went in to get a restraining order, and they just said, "Pick out a line that sounds like something we can enforce." So yeah, but that's make, not how law works, though. You think if, if he writes, <laughs> listen, if he writes a book that ha- that you know, I feel I need to be to have a restraining order against him. I can find a line in that book to twist my way to get that through. Mm. So, There's a hundred percent. Obviously, it, it happened. Thing. So here's what I think happened. I actually got a call about a day or two before then from the police of the town she lived in. Yeah. And they kept leaving me voicemails just like, hey, give us a call. We'd like to talk. I assume she went to the police station and said, this is, you know, damaging to me. What can we do? And they kind of said, look, we'll, we'll call him, but there's no crime that's been committed. Right. It's freedom of expression. Right. And I think they told her, if you think, you know, something's wrong or you feel threatened, that you should probably sue him privately. I don't know that she's smart enough or had the... Means. The, the means to do that. So she did the only thing possible. I honestly think it was to get back at me, which was to try to take a restraining order that's just false. Get back at you for what, though? 
uh, I don't know, maybe ruining her life, exposing her, exposing her sex, embarrassing her probably. Gotcha. Yeah. Although, again, in the book, I embarrass myself. I talk about my life growing up. I talk about some shady stuff. I, talk, I, I expose myself in this. Hmm. Yeah, but you know what? She could have literally kept quiet and, you know, and, and not say, hey, yeah, he's talking about me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but the in, the inner circle, any but like any mutual friend, any family yeah, member, anybody that knew the both of them would know who he was talking about. Absolutely. Yeah, but now everybody knows. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, there was yeah, there's, there's hundreds of copies that are out there. So I ended up going to court. I had to, you know, there's no. We, we stopped talking anyways prior to the book. Anyways, right? Like, it was just a period where we were just like, you know what? And how about today, you guys? So hold on, let's lead yeah, up yeah. to that. Yeah. So Looking Jay always trying to. We go to, to court, end, man. We go to court. Let the you foreplay know, happen. <laughs> Ten days later, we go to court, and I tell my side. She tells her side. She shows up with her brother. I showed up alone. I had a whole sheet. I was ready to go. Like, I've been in court before for other yeah. stuff. You know, obviously no restraining orders. And I just kind of ate her up in that way, just saying, like, you know, was your name mentioned? Was your kid's name mentioned? Was your address, your phone number? Was it anything to do with you whatsoever? You know what I mean? Like... And she had to answer the correct answer, which was no to these things. I said, you know, it's just freedom of speech. The judge said, you know, you guys are two consenting adults. Have you talked in a while? No. You know, I said, well, then you guys are fine. You know, I don't see an issue here. There's no need to continue on. You live in two different towns. You've gone your separate way in life. I'm going to lift the order or whatever. And that was it. And it was like, you know, freedom of speech won that day. I was oh, proud good. of that because. No shit. Yeah. And then, of course, it was another three weeks for me to get my guns back. And, you know, she, it was her attempt to kind of, you know, squash me. I don't understand. So I. I Where's the connection between a restraining order? I mean, is this person saying that my life is in danger because he's stalking me, because he's calling me, because he's texting me, because he's at my front door, because he's following me to the so mall? So I learned a lot about that on that That's day. kind of what a restraining order is, right? Like an order so, of protection against somebody. Res- so here's what I learned about it. But what does that have to do with his guns? Massachusetts will automatically issue a restraining order to anybody, I don't know if it's specifically women or not, that walks in to any court and asks for one. It's an automatic thing. It's Nobody's hard. It's ever been denied. Which, well, yeah, you don't have to have like, cause, it sounds. It, it sounds, sounds like, like an inconvenience. I just want that person to stay away from me. Right. That's probably the safer way to do it. I so, think ultimately yeah, that's a better but, way and to do it. And I don't be. disagree. It can be manipulative, though, because if I don't want him to have his guns or I want to It can be, him in but I think that pain. gets sorted but, out. And that's where I, where my question lies. Like, okay, I, I get it. Somebody can walk in and be like, hey, I don't want this, these people or this person to stay away from me. You know, X amount of feet or X amount of yards, isn't it by something like that? A hundred, you got to stay with... They're all different, but yeah. yeah. okay, whatever. What does that have to do with somebody's guns, she, though? But she said that there's a threat a to threat her A threat against her family, dude. And if there's a threat to her children and her family, they're going to take his guns. Which I think but they should. But don't you have to... What? Don't I think you have they to should. provide proof of that? So that's the thing. You get your day they, 10 that's days why later. That's you use the line for in the book. Yeah, but that line is non-threatening at all. Yeah. So what I also learned was... You know, she mentions stalking in the thing. I think he's stalking me or something to that oh, point. Were you? No. And here's the thing. Stalking, it, when you look up the definition, is a repeat a repeat offense of something. I went to your work several times. Not I went to your work once. Right. I sent you one letter. No, I have to send you five letters. And right. that's the thing. So she was unable to prove that I stalked her. Or did you do any kids. of that? Like send her one letter or show Nothing. up uninvited one Never. time? Oh, one time, yeah. But it's mentioned in the book. Yes. It's gotcha. mentioned in the book. That one time when she just wouldn't respond, I wondered what the hell is going on. And of course, you know, all the negative thoughts go through your head. So I thought she was cheating on me. So I, I waited outside and watched. But this is while you were together? Towards this the is end. Towards the end, towards yes, the end. exactly. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, I was in her, you know, her apartment place at the time. And I just watched her get in her car, come out at 8 in the morning, go to work. And that's it. And I drove away and she drove away. That was only to get proof for myself that she wasn't dating or seeing somebody else. Right. A little, little stalky, though. Right, if that was happening, I could understand why a, she would do it. Yeah, if it was a repeated yeah. offense, you know, obviously that would be stalking. Yeah. Right, there's or, no or, trend no, there. even, there's no... even once, if she filed the restraining order then, at, at that moment, you know, not months later when you finish the book and she reads the book. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If at that moment she got to work and said, hey, this dude was just outside my house watching me. I'm filing a restraining order. I, to me, that makes sense. You know, because that's like she's feeling it. Her emotions are there Ooh. now. Hold on. It's currently happening at that moment. But the book came out months later, correct? Yeah, a couple months, yeah. So to go back and say, oh, by the way, a few months ago, he, all right, well, he hasn't since, like, it's done now. And the judge saw that, yeah. Right. uh, Let me add something legally here. So you, as a citizen, on a public road, you're you're allowed to drive wherever the fuck you want and, 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 and watch whatever you want. Those are your rights as a citizen. Somebody can't impede or infringe on that by saying, hey, look, he's following me. Hey, look, he's on a fucking public road. He's allowed to go down this road. Mm-hmm. 
like you, I, I don't I don't know where the legality comes into play That's there because the repetitiveness. Like, if you do it as a repeated thing, if you're constantly right, going if you're to doing it once, and I mean, like, what if that's your route of travel? What if right. what, what if she's going to the mall and you're 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 going to the mall? You know and what I'm saying? That's but see, the, the thing with the the problem with that um, defense or argument, I would say, is that that's logistically that's provable. You know, like if you live here and you're going to Warwick Mall. For you to say, oh, I was going to the mall, but you're outside of my house in Johnson, it doesn't make any sense. Pragmatically, like that, that situation is not there. But that's not I, how I, the I get law what is based around. I get what you're saying. If, if it's I black want to go and white. to Warwick Mall through Johnston, that's my right. Yeah, I, sure. I, again, I get what you're saying. I get the point that you're trying to make. Yeah, if I want to go through that's, Canada. That's a little bit general, though. Like, if yeah. you're going to go to the mall near my house and, yeah. you, and you pass by me, that's a different thing. Coming to my apartment complex and waiting for me to leave before I go to work. One time maybe is arguable, but if it's multiple times, like he was saying, it's. But right. that's the thing, and he's saying it's not a trend; it's not repeated. Right. Well, it's also so, but court. even the one time, well, we talked earlier about it, laws. It might sound on, weird, but we, legally, we talked earlier about laws being right, morally or wrong. This is a situation where it's a good thing that the law is in, interpretable. You know, it's open to interpretation because it can't just be black and white there. I mean, it can't many- say you can always have the freedom to go wherever you want or you can't because ultimately, dude, if you're parked outside of somebody's house, is it a public road? Yes. Should you be doing that and stalking them? Fuck no, bro. Like, you shouldn't. It should be illegal to do that. And I mean, somebody's got to interpret that law in order to hold you accountable to it or not. Well, it's not interpret the law. The law is self-explanatory. It's interpret the intention of the person. And it was her, that's what I wanted to keep saying, was it's her burden of proof at the time. She had to prove that that a crime took place, and she couldn't, and that's why I was able to get my stuff back. back. I'm okay with that. I think that's a safer way to do it. Like, if somebody comes to you, uh, comes to the court, and tells the courts that I'm threatening them for their lives, I'm okay with the police coming to me, taking my guns away immediately, and being... Uh, cautious about it you know versus making her prove it first and then in the meantime she gets killed dude that is you know absolutely I mean? insane i believe that's I, my that's my yeah opinion. you can it have that opinion that it works, I, because that's, not, that's the way that it works and I, I think that is on. the right way to in this to country everybody's innocent until proven guilty mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying just because somebody accuses me of something you can't come in my house and start taking my shit that's i mean i, I can go walk around start accusing everybody of everything just yeah to, you can you know what i'm saying yeah. like that can't be the way that we work in it this is, country. It is the way. Yeah. Well, I mean, think think about it too. You got a woman that walks into a police station and says, "Somebody wrote a book. Like my, you know, my ex boyfriend wrote a book. Yep. I'm threatened by this person. I feel like he caused harm to my family. You don't think they're going to side with him and give him a temporary restraining? Well, hold on. And go to court about it? No. I. I, I mean, if it was me listening to somebody say this, I'd be like, "All right, sh- the burden of proof is you're the accuser. I'm not going to this guy's house just on your word." You know, and start taking his shit. That's well. I'm sure that was a conversation at some point, but they you have to prove it. your accusation. Which she she did, she did. enough. She, she showed him the book. book, that line in the book. Which well, I, I guess that's where we differ. Right. Do you guys well, believe that that's proof enough? The problem well, is no, we're looking at said, that as a very small sample situation. Said, she shows the line of the book and said, "Here's where I think I'm being threatened." And then they probably said, "Has there been any other times where you felt like you were threatened?" Yes, I came out of my apartment. He's sitting there waiting for me when I before I go to school. But that's not a threat. It. Also, let's me, let's just make it clear: we're not talking about Jay's situation specifically anymore. No, we're talking about now, larger. Like, yeah, we're, this yeah, this is not a public debate on whether or not you should go to jail. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he put his head on. He's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, this guys? is years what old the now. Fuck? Yeah. No, I think we're talking we're totally about more or less the fact how that you wrote a book. Which is, yeah, no, it's good though. It's more or less how we feel about how the law works. Because I think, personally, again, I think that the the court system handled that the best way that they can. You know, if a woman comes or you know anybody comes and says, "Hey, I feel like my life is threatened. This is why." They're I not understood sold. it, yeah. but I didn't agree with it. But of course, because it's an inconvenience to you at this of point. Of course, and there was and a time had I been found guilty or whatever you would call it at the time, I would have never got my guns back. Isn't that a direct violation of the Second Amendment that you have the right to bear? And now, so, now the government, think about this. The government is infringing on that. They're taking away your right to bear. With just based, cause, though. Right, no, based uh, on a crime. On. Wait, right. is it just cause, though? I, just I because so. somebody says it and, and uses this line, that to me, if I read that line, that's non-threatening at yeah. all. No, I think what Josh's point is, is that this happened to him. In the meantime, before he gets his fair trial, should he be allowed to have guns? Another another perfect point for this is if, say, you're a school counselor and one kid starts acting out like crazy, you know there's guns in his house and there's guns in his home. Yeah. You think that there might be a threat. Before he goes to right. court or before he gets to explain 
I feel like the cops should be able to go grab exactly, all the guns. No, no, yes. no, no, no. It's it's so, so, it makes listen, so much more sense to be proactive rather than reactive. I get no, what you're but both you, saying. But you, but you can't be proactive in America in that aspect because you need search warrants. That's the whole purpose Innocent of them. Innocent until proven guilty. Yeah, you need you need a judge to. Well, then it goes back to well, mass state law. If there's yeah, there's obviously a, a part of the law here that you you know you don't understand because it happened. I mean, it legally a, happened. Imagine a state where police officers just based off of hey, I feel like this guy's doing this. Is well, that's literally like what he Welcome just explained. To Massachusetts. What I'm like, saying, bro, like no, I don't care if you saying, feel that you you need you need probable cause. You need you know you don't you though. need to you, you do you need to articulate. That's your opinion on the matter, and I no I that's that. no that's not my opinion. That is law, but well, it just that happened. Is police law. They didn't. It, ha- it happened to me, so they didn't. No, no, I'm saying probable cause. I'm, I'm talking about what I'm talking about right now, not necessarily your oh, situation. Okay. Well, let's well, if we talk about his exact situation, that's probably the way it should be. She had enough. That's the way it is. A restraining order, and in mass, if there's a threat with a restraining order, the cops are going to go get the guns. It's just State, yeah. it's, it's got to be a state law or it is. policy. Yeah. 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 yeah, but it's, so it's, it's not, the way that's handled. I mean, is is the way that I expect and I think that it should be handled. You know, because at the end of the day, every now and then, is there somebody that like yourself who had no intent to harm anybody? There was really no cause for it. You got your guns back. Was it an inconvenience? Yes, but I think I don't know your girlfriend. Nor does it matter. Hold rights. on. I think that I would rather you be inconvenienced for a couple weeks than say Herbie. 100% telling the truth and they don't take your guns and then she ends up dead because of it. Sure. You know, I hate to yeah. paint you in this I'm picture. No, no, no. I'm I, trying I get to the be laws. broad about it. So it I, I think the that the law is the way that it should be yeah. and that's how you handle it, you I know, the safest them. way possible I to an extent. With that. You can, but okay. yeah. laws, laws change and they evolve. That's why this law is the way it is now. So since that court date, I have not ever seen her, spoken to her. Obviously, no. Why would you at this point? She really tried to. How do you feel about that now? Like today, like right now, as we're talking about it, does it still fucking, does it hit home? Does it like. The whole thing hits home. First of all, I I don't want to change any of it. I don't want to take any of it back. That moment of my life was one of the most happiest. And it's raw. It's. Four months, beautiful love. Like, I, I, I would almost fucking give up everything just to have that moment again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Looking the after effect of what she did to me and the type of person that she kind of changed that I thought she was, that she really wasn't. You know, I, I feel like, man, it's, it, it hurts. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, I would give anything for the moment back, but I don't think that I would. Um, Come in. Let, let me ask you this. Do you feel, you personally, when you look at, like, every, your, your history and what has happened, do you feel that you overstepped any kind of line or boundaries? Sure. Looking back, I mean, people. You do. Like uh, what? Like, what do you think you could have, like, did you do you feel like you maybe you were stalking her do you feel like maybe you were threatened her do you feel you know those, those kind of things I, I can see how somebody would see that i don't view it that way but i can see how somebody Michael jackson else would look at that yeah it's Jesus perception Christ, it's the word perception dude. we've said it a hundred times Jay jackson <laughs> yeah perception yeah yeah so i can see how when she read that and saw like you know i was at her place sure i get how somebody would say oh that's you know a stalking vibe or whatever you want to call it i didn't see it that way i was protecting my own interest if she had another dude okay cool i got my answer but she had ignored me for weeks and weeks and you know she would text periodically whenever she felt like it and you know i i I felt like something was going on like i was being let's say you 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 did do those things and you found out she was dating somebody else or whatever what next oh fuck i don't know i can't get into what we're ifing (laughs) The guns come into play. <laughs> yeah, no, well, I'm not Massachusetts violent. didn't take my guns, so I'm going to shoot the whole fucking place up. <laughs> no, I'm certainly Go, not. Chris Benoit so and those not, bitches. Why am I laughing? That's not even funny. Yeah, that no, I'm, I'm not a violent person. No, I mean, I'm. Uh, believe me, I've why been you got all these guns, on. man? I've been lied to. You know, I'm the type of person, I'll shake your hands and have a good life. Like, that, yeah. that's how I am. Yeah. You just needed closure or that's an answer. exactly the word. I, yeah, you just needed to know, closure. like, hey, look. Yep. What's going on? So yeah. I can make some decisions and not be just hung up and you know you think in limbo. That, and as he, like in a relationship, do you think that like you have the right to closure in that situation? Uh, I wish we could all say that about all aspects of our lives. That's I was crazy, at, I went though, from the highest high ever I'd ever felt to the lowest low. And that's just, that's tough. She had just quit. We went from "I love you" one month to "Quit me cold turkey" the next month. And that'll do a number on I love the, you in four months. You guys really fucking head I'm over heels. I'm telling you, it was quick, hard. Man. Yeah, I'll send you guys the book. It's it's pretty powerful. Yeah, the book is yeah, really, yeah, really yeah. Powerful. I don't want to be an accessory to any of your shit, so I don't know if just, I should read just this rip, book. Rip chapter sixteen out. If you don't <laughs> chapter want to read about sixteen my sex up. Life. Nah, that's the only part I want to read. Actually, it's a picture book, right? <laughs> Hopefully, it's a fucking it's like, comic. It's like the at this pop. point, I was throbbing. I'm like scratching, scratching, sniff book. Rip those pages out. I'm pulsating. It's like she <laughs> followed the veins with her pinky nail. Oh, man. <laughs> Bro, come on. Oh, man. Books. 
so, uh, you know, I, 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 but the experience, I, I can't, I can't ever take it back. It was a wonderful experience, both with her feeling the highs and the lows and writing the book and coming up out of that. Like I, I was at the point I write in the book, like I was suicidal at the yeah. end. A lot of people don't know that. Like I was, I was reaching out to people that just weren't there for me. And it was, I was in a real, are you okay place. today? Absolutely. I am so much better. 100% 180. Cheers to you, man. Thank good, you. Good Thank shit. you very much. I'm, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad you came out of that hole, you know, because that's, that's a, I think that's a thing that, you know, a lot of people can relate to as far as being on that low and like, fuck, man, you feel like your back's against the wall. You feel like, you know. I've learned so much too. Yeah. Like, that's at that point when you're By yourself, that, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, for me to be single again, I learned how to love myself and take care of myself, put myself first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, my daughter, my kids, I never neglected my daughter during that period, but, you know, I feel like. When you think about suicide, you think about the people who might love you the most. And, and obviously, you know, my daughter subconsciously helped me get through that. And, yeah, I think it's... Uh, let, me, let me ask this just in general to any, who anybody who wants to answer. Do you believe that the thought of suicide is a normal thought? I think... I'm, I'm talking about just thinking about it, not necessarily following through with it. I'm I saying... Would, yeah, I would say that most people or, or all people ex- have some experienced point, that thought at some point in their life. And if you don't, that might be a little weird. Because we yeah, even if you... Whatever. You could lose your paycheck. You could lose a girlfriend. You could get in a car. You could have some sort of pain in your life, which for that one minute might put you in that place. And then the next day, you could be better. Right, right, right. Other people right. think about it every day, but yeah. What do you, what do you think? You think that's like a normal... Uh, for instance, even, you know, and I, I'm just trying to relate this to something else. Like, everybody's thoughts go, like, all over the place. They just, just the, just because you're thinking about something doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to act on it or do whatever. But what, what, what do you think, Josh? I don't know, man. It's, Have you ever thought about it's it a, yourself? Are you really ever really down in the dumps? It's a very, yeah, I think we've all been sad. You know, we've all been depressed. We've sure. all dealt with Have breakups and suicide? lost a job. Um when you say thought about it man it's it's such a vague thing to say because there's a thought there's a there's a thought of just like oh man be easier if i was dead you know is that thinking about it yes then there's thinking about it like you're listing people like all right well their life would get easier their life would get easier you know everything would be easier about this no i'm not saying me but i'm saying there's there's levels to that shit like has anybody ever pictured a life thing who would be at my funeral if i died you know maybe i I should kill myself said that yeah maybe i've seen all those views in my in my head definitely yeah you know you just it's the it's the pain you want to take yourself away from the pain that you're feeling yeah see even what you're saying like i feel like that's a deeper level than most people think about it yeah i I don't think most people really think about committing suicide i think people might just picture you know what would happen if they died you know who would care if they died but i don't think suicidal thoughts happen to everybody no no i don't think so george you got anything to weigh on (laughs) i've been in situations before where i thought it would be easier to not be here right have i actually had suicidal thoughts like i'd actually do it no i kind of look at it so here's a weird twist i kind of look at it like like almost like murder in my lifetime, I bet way more people think I contemplate thought, murder. Well, than so, suicide. Like, it, you know, it sounds like such a uh, you know extreme thing. I thought about killing motherfuckers, you know, and but even then, there's a difference. but would I actually do it? I, I, it's hard for me to answer that question personally because I've been in situations where I could have, and you know, there's people that have been on the business end of my fucking weapon before, and if okay, if I'll do it for that. W- you know, would I do it? It's 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 a very very deep question. Like yeah, and I I'd have to say I'm the opposite. I I don't think I've ever had thoughts of like actually at the hands of myself killing somebody, but yet I've had more of the depression thoughts at different points in my life where I thought it would be easy to just get rid of the pain that way. You know. Well, when I say like I you know people have been on the business and I'm thinking of my military service when I was I'm in the Middle East and disregard you know we're forming stuff. a 360 a 360 cordon around you know two armored suburbans in the middle of. Uh, of a highway in Kuwait or something or wherever. I didn't know you served. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Thank thank you. Uh, And, you know, if somebody gave me the, you know, the okay on my radio. You're taking a a motherfucker out. Yeah, without a thought. You know what I'm saying? So uh, along those lines, if I'm thinking, man, if my mentality, my psyche, if my, uh, you know, the psychological part of me would just shoot and kill a motherfucker, a family, a kid, or whoever that I don't know, based off of some, you know, just because somebody told me that it's okay to do it or I should do it or whatever, without me knowing anything about that family and the situation, 
Would I actually do it stateside? Would I? I mean, I'd venture to but say, yeah, his, I probably would. I think those are two very <laughs> I'm not different homicidal things, or man. suicidal right now. Those, those are two different things because you can ultimately, I mean, when you're following orders as a soldier, you can pin that on somebody. It's never really 100% on you where as a civilian having those thoughts and then executing them, you're the only one that's paying for those consequences and you made the decision. You know, I feel like psychologically or subcon- I don't know. Yeah, subconsciously, if you're following orders and you're brainwashed, Maybe that's, you know, not the nicest term to use, but I feel like that's how you are when you're in the military. You're you're just brainwashed to follow an order. Like you just said, not think about it. You know what I mean? Like you're 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 just listening. You're not you don't right. care whether or not this person has a mother, a father, a daughter, or what. Nothing matters. Somebody says shoot, you shoot. So I don't think you're when you're in that situation, or even now, like having been in that situation previously, that you're putting murder and eliminating a target on the same playing field because when you're in the military man you're you're hitting a target you know you're not even really seeing that person as a person well there, there's there's documented and you're, and you're not making a decision sorry somebody's making it for you which is a, a, a an but insane you crush are making to, a de- decision ultimately yes but you always have that to fall back on that i was just following orders well th- there there are documented instances where let's say special ops people that have shot kids you know where they they have like fucking like ptsd obviously Mm. you know are they they, regret think about this now are they tried are they tried and convicted of murder you're still held accountable for your actions no matter what so when you come home you can be tried and convicted of murder absolutely if if if, even if your situation that you just explained oh yeah because because they train us in the Geneva Convention and et cetera, et cetera. We go through a training. So I, you know this. You were in the same. I understand that. Just but that's because, why I, just I because your supervisor tells you to do something. How about how, let's go back to a few good men. Just because your supervisor tells you to do something, that doesn't you know negate your responsibility and what you're doing. Right, right. If your supervisor told you, hey, go shoot that motherfucker, you're still liable to, of killing mm-hmm. that guy. Right. In the service, I think the whole concept now, man. You know, now now that it's I'm out, it's a long, long time later. I'm a little older. It's a really fucking twisted. And I I, I thought about mentality, that mentality, dude. Yeah. Of the of the of that many people, you know, that are just triggered or programmed to shoot somebody and end another human's life without it's a job, question. Though at that point, to them, it's just a job. That that's where the problem is. You know, is that it's just a job. You How know, about the guys that fly up. the drones that just that's sit even in Vegas worse and they push that sick. button? It's, that makes me yeah. sick. That's your, that's your it makes job. me sick because so many innocent people, dude. You know, and we're we're so we get so brainwashed as a country man that we think, like, hey, don't be coming in here being a terrorist coming to our country trying to kill people. But now we you could be same. you could be dealing with. You know, somebody where at seven years old, you know, a little robot came from the sky and blew up their building and killed both their parents. And that's it. You know, like that was that to them. That's Americans. Americans did that to me. So years and years and years of Americans doing that to their family, their friends. But then all of a sudden, you know, they're 20 years old. What do you how do you think they're going to feel about us? You know, like they're going to want to kill us. They're going to look at us as the enemy because in their eyes. They're not doing anything wrong. They're eating dinner with their family, and Americans are just blowing their buildings up and killing everybody. That's true. Very like true. It's a, it's a, and there's no, I mean, like you said, we need defense because we need to be safe. Right. And if we're not number one, somebody, the big fish eats the little fish. That's you know, right. Like, it's just, it is what it is. But there's got, like, hopefully technology, man, will get us to a point where we can find some balance to where we can maintain our defense without having to be so fucking, like, cruelly offensive and and there's way less collateral damage when there than there is now because it's, I like the way you think about that. I mean, that's that that sounds like a very you know fair uh, yeah, I agree. way of going going about it. How come without you know I, I, without totally cutting off the subject? I you know I want to spend at least let's say f- five or ten minutes, fifteen minutes, whatever, really fast on the fact that you're involved huge in poker. Can we talk about that really Absolutely, fast? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I always thought that you Hard guys... Hard pass for me. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> even even for future reference. I always thought that you guys should have a timer. Like 20 minutes on each subject and hit the button and, and go because, you know... Yeah, you know, we I, we actually... We brought that up. Remember when we first started? I said, hey, let, let, you I know... we should great. We thought about it and then ultimately, like... But the conversation just, just kind of go and we don't ever want to cut like, it off. Like, we, we decided, decided it was just a really terrible to, to idea. people, you know? <laughs> that's true. That, well, that's what Sorry, a, ti- that's what a timer does. Where if we don't, you know, we don't have the timer, we don't have anything regulating it, the conversations flow a little more organic. Sure. You know, yeah. well, 
ultimately when it dies down, it dies down. Like, look, we're not talking about Eminem anymore. Right. And nobody told us to stop talking about Eminem. Sure, yeah, you know, yeah. Even though every time I look at you, I think Eminem. You got the hoodie, the hat, you know what I mean? It's, oh, thank you, yeah. You're white. I had blonde hair as, as a kid. I did get a lot of reference to that when I was younger. So you, you're a dealer. You you actually deal at a casino. Poker games. Poker is life. Tell me. G- g- give us. Life. So we're all poker players. We're, we're all avid poker players. George, myself, uh, Josh here. I'm a poker Yourself, player. Yourself, you're a poker player. They play poker. There's a difference. <laughs> L- let me ask you. Give me, give me like three things that you hate that players do at the table that annoy the fucking shit out of you. Three? Yeah, I don't know. Can okay, we, give me can five. Can get 300? Right off the top of your head. Three things that they do. Well, can I explain things before I jump into it? Nope. Answer the, the question. The explainer would be this. The <laughs> point of a dealer at least myself, is to go as fast as you can, get as many hands out as you can, and keep the game moving. See, I like the way you think. If you, as a player, impede on that, you're pissing us off. But what are the ways somebody could impede? Because you what have you mean, to... when somebody's in the tank? No, no, no. Well, that could be one thing. But, uh, yeah, you know, uh, when and for you're... the non-poker players, being in the tank is when you're, you're thinking. The action's on you, and you're thinking about what you're about to do, whether it be fold, razor, or something else, or whatever. Yeah. And just to, uh, to speak on behalf of the players, I think that it's, um, it's wise to always remember that the players enjoying themselves and coming to play there are the only reason that there's a poker room and you know that is true that that, that those tables are making any money mm-hmm. so i get what you're saying you know there's i'm not that guy that's saying the customer is always right but i'm also that guy that realizes hey as a business you got to make sure they're at least happy you know like keep them happy so, so what would somebody do to impede let's say your hands per hour or hands per half hour yeah. whatever it is so you know when you're talking about speed i consider myself a, a speed dealer um, yeah when you uh, are folding your small blind or big blind because of a raise and you put the chip on top of your card and slide it in, well, guess what? I still got to take the money off the cards, and then I still got to move the cards to the left, move the money to the right. So you actually think you're doing me a favor, but in essence, you're just taking the Is that time. a pet peeve? Is that, is that it something? It is. It is with a lot of dealers, yeah. Anytime we can shave a second, half a second, three seconds off our time, it's faster for us. It's better for you. Absolutely. So that's look, just look, look, okay, with you saying that, do – are you speaking for the majority? Because I know a lot of slow dealers. There are two and types they of suck. dealers. There are speed dealers, I call them, and then there are sandbaggers. Yeah. There's a wide variety. Like the of sandbaggers both. don't give a flying fuck what you're doing, what they're doing. And that's what- because the tips are pooled at some establishments. Yes. Because I feel like when if you're getting more money based on the amount of hands you deal, what's your goal as a dealer? To deal yeah, more pump hands. them out. Exactly. So when you know that, hey, no matter what, you know, I'm going to make this much in tips because I make it all the time and we share the tips. It doesn't matter what I do. Naturally, for the most part, most people are going to just try to slack off if they're not going to be punished for it. If they're not going to. Right. If they know that they can make the same amount of money doing less work. Why would they do more? There's no incentive for them to get more. I hate when I go to a poker room and the dealers all split the tips because it, it also it hurts everybody because if I know that you just dealt me a monster. But if I know that you're splitting the tips with everybody else, why am I going to give you a twenty-five dollar tip or a fifty dollar tip? You know, like because the next four dealers are going to suck cock. Like they don't—they're not doing well. You know, like I don't want to tip them. It's—I feel like it's really against the the good dealers. There's I, another scenario it's too. Hurt. It's actually better for the house. It's more beneficial that we keep our own. And we've brought this, you know, up. to them. Yeah, brought this. You know, we have a union where I work. Oh, I'm sure we brought that's this been up. Brought up many times by yeah. the good dealers. G- give us some other examples of. Oh, of other things that we don't like? Yeah, yeah just like hygiene. whatever. Yeah. Hygiene's got to be one of them. Oh, my God. Hygiene is up there, yeah. Somebody sits right in the tent or there the one seat right inside you. There are definitely people that smell body odor. Breath is another thing. You know, there's a lot of, you know, bad breath. Those are some, those are like funny ones. What about the, the, let's say the three or the, the, the corner seats that are around the, and they don't throw their bet in far enough. Does, does that piss you off? Uh, that doesn't happen as often, but those are the worst. Because you're a tall guy. You, you can kind of reach. But there are some short dealers that I know they get aggravated. Yeah, those are the worst seats to deal too. I feel like you when you turn the car card go. I'm trying to swing the card left, dealing right handed. The most flipped over cards are going to be in like the three and the four seat. Right, that makes sense. Yeah, you know, that's definitely it. Um, and that's just because of the way your body. You another know, pet you know, peeve is what placing what your bed at any point on the button. That's another pet peeve. Dealers can't stand that. Oh, like again, on the I actual what do you button mean? itself? On the, like physically. Yeah, on the dealer button. You're betting 50 bucks or you're calling somebody Who else. Who the fuck does that? Put, idiots, a lot of people. Idiots. And I got to take it off the button without moving the button. 
it's or when I'm scooping them all up, you know, everything's on a flat playing surface. Now I have to take it. Let off me ask that. you: Do you ever stop and say, "Hey, can you stop doing that?" <laughs> um, I'm serious. Like, I, 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 that's something a, I would a fine say. Line. Like, hey. Can there's you a, not do that? There's a fine line. If there's a newbie or something, I'll let them know that, you know, maybe it's poor etiquette to do that or, you know, dealers don't like that. or Yeah. yeah it's, just, poor etiquette is a strong word to use. It's an inconvenience to you. So putting your okay. money on, putting your your money or chips on the button, putting your money or chips on the cards, mm-hmm. what else? Um, you know, hygiene. And I'm going to I'm gonna be honest here. I'm going to be frank. Good. To me as a player, those kind of sound petty. To, when you're talking about speed dealing and to the average dealer, they wouldn't remember. even think he's, twice about he's that. He's dealing... You're only paying. I don't do those things, but I, I, I'm just hearing them. I'm just like, really? That's it? Because you you got to remember. You got to remember. I get it. He's he's dealing to ten people all day long. You know what I mean? So Mm -hmm. it's to us, we might just see one person doing it, where he's seeing it multiple times a day, all day, every day. So those seconds add up. Mm -hmm. So I get that. Getting back to the good. I was gonna say a pet peeve of mine goes back to time, and I'm not even a dealer, but just. if it bothers me, it must bother you when there's a river bet and only one person is left to act and they want to ask how much the bet is and then take forever to fucking stack their chips and count the exact amount when you could just fucking say call, bro. Half the time, if you win, it doesn't matter. The other half, now you can count the chips and push the bet yeah. out there. See, to me, that's kind of petty. That doesn't bother me. Whenever anybody's taking their time, it, I mean, I get paid the same and I'm at the table for the same amount of time. I think you misunderstood what I said. No, 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 I totally get it. Yeah. But the time and, and however you want to take on any bet, river bet, whatever, that's fine. Or counting out your chips. No, 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 that doesn't make sense because it can only be a river bet if you're the last to act. And if you tell me it's $75 and I've already decided that I'm going to call. Oh, to physically count out each Physically chip? count out, you know, five stacks of five. Wait, no. Yeah, five stacks of 25 instead of just saying call. Yeah. That could shave 15 seconds at 20. 25 at 75? Or whatever whatever the amount. Oh. Three stacks at 25. <laughs> this is not a math podcast, but you know. get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, absolutely. you've already decided that you're going to call, but instead of saying call or throwing in one chip, you count out all the yeah. chips but that you th- have to. There's a no- reason why sometimes why they do that, and, uh, and it's to see what kind of a f- – like, taking away – it's a psychological, visual thing. Take away 75 out of your stack so you can count how much you have left. To see what the ratio yeah. is, if this is half my stack, one third of my stack, that kind of thing. I'm not. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the. Yeah, not a lot of people. I'm talking do that. about it. Most people, the people that do this, probably just don't know. They yes. can just say call and we're good. Yes, exactly. But, I would say you know some of the elderly or some of the newer younger. Yeah. Kids, they think they, they don't have to know. put the money in the pot. Exactly the exact yeah. amount. Yeah. Okay. So, Go ahead. We 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 interrupted you. Sorry. Yeah. You no. Know, just getting back to like the the tipping part and you know um, keeping our own versus pooled tips. It, it actually does help. Um, not that I wouldn't like to see keeping your own because the, the faster dealers are going to make more money and the slower dealers are going to have to come up to speed, which benefits the house too. You know what I mean? More hands, the house is raking yeah, more. because those good dealers aren't going to come down in everybody, their speed. Yeah, <laughs> everybody wins, yeah. Um, but I can't stand the, oh, if you kept your own, I'd give you more. And I must hear that at least five times a day, every day. You know, it's like yeah. dangling that candy in front of your face and then putting it I don't, in your pocket. I don't more because it's a personal experience. I don't say it, but that's the truth, you know? No it doubt is. it's the truth in everybody's mind, but to say it to me is dangling that candy yeah. and then saying, ah, screw you, sorry. Yeah, I can see that. You know, yeah. you, I just can't believe there's not like a protest at any casino that doesn't let people split. Because you got to remember a lot of the, well, now it's a while, but if there are a lot of new dealers, new dealers aren't going to be in favor of sp- keeping their own tips, I would assume, if they're not as good. Sure. You know, not as quick. You got to get up to speed. You got to be out of there. Yeah. Do you think uh, as a dealer, how long have you been dealing? Man, I've been dealing um, at the place I work now. I've been dealing four years, but I've been in the game 10. Okay. Do you think you have an edge on, let's say, somebody who hasn't dealt in the game, in in a game of poker? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Speed alone. Speed. (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm sorry. Let let, let me reiterate the question. Your experience gives you an edge. Playing. Do you think that you have an edge? Playing the game as a player, not as a dealer. Oh, okay, yeah, you yeah, yeah. Say it that way. Um, I'd like to think so. Because you yeah. see a lot of hands. <laughs> Absolutely, he sees a lot of hands, but he hundred percent interaction. I see a lot of reads. Yeah, so yeah. I would say yeah. yes. You, you, you get that hundred percent, ten to twenty percent edge up on people. Absolutely. I would wish That's I played more edge. poker so that I could, you know, make more capitalize off it. I just don't have time as much time anymore. Yeah, I have a lot right. Of, stop lot of doing these podcasts, on. dude. <laughs> I'm actually going to be playing this weekend at Foxwoods. Oh, yeah? yeah. What, what, what spread? Right, what? Maybe, I'm going to do the 600. Maybe you don't gonna... say that. I feel like you narrowed down, narrowed down the options where you might work when you say shit like that. You can bleep it out if you want. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to fire a couple of bullets at the 600. All right. Real fast. Again, we'll, we'll try to wrap this up. Yeah, we got to wrap us up. A, give us a tip. 
as players, because, you know, again, we're all players. Well, give us a tip on, like, how to help. Let us do our jobs. Don't move the button. Don't make your own oh, see, change. See, I, I actually, always move I the do. button. I always announce it. Yes, yeah. no, I've heard, announcing it's okay. I've heard dealers actually say the opposite. Like, thanks, because what you said earlier, that's a second that I just saved or two seconds that I just saved if right. you announce it. And if, every, if everybody did that, if everybody yeah. moved it while I was putting the cards in and announced it to me, yeah. life would be great. Right. Like but you not get everybody two out of three and they move it. And, and I then forget I sometimes. Yeah, and then I move it again, and then the blinds are fucked up, and then and they wait till you're seven you cards in to tell you, and you're like, yep. All right, out guys. of ten times, I probably forget once, and but I, th- that one time, I actually kind of feel bad because now I'm I'm com- I'm I'm making that person's job harder, and I'm like, yeah. fuck, I sh- I forgot, I totally forgot yeah. to say it, and then they move it another you know position, and yeah, because sometimes it can fuck shit up. I usually just don't fuck with it. I, that's why I probably should do that yeah. too, just yeah, to be safe. Should. Yeah, you should. You know, lately I feel like there's been a lot Bitch. of like tension in the room with with. Um, Players, players, and dealers. Um, look, we're human at the end of the day. Is it that room specifically? Um, well, I deal in that room, so to me I think it is. So. But yeah. I think a lot of people are still salty because when that room first opened, it was really, really rough as a player. You know, there were a lot of new dealers there, a lot of new floor managers. The, the game of poker wasn't when ever there, you know. Was. like So there were a lot of people that just had no idea what the fuck is going on. So not only is your experience as a player... Uh, tainted because your your dealer is not as good as it should be on top of a losing session on top of a losing session on top of a a ruling coming from a floor manager like a supervisor that is not even close to being correct or you'd get you know a ruling here and then the same situation would happen in 10 minutes and you get a different ruling like so i think a lot of people like you said about you know trump (laughs) early you know these people are just still salty and still clinging to these negative experiences they had because for the last year and a half i've been going there i've had no issue you know, it's it's been yeah, straight. It's, it's a busy room and it's a smaller room, so I think a lot of people that are used to the larger rooms feel like it should be run as well. And it's let's face it, it's not right now. You mm. know, there's always things that we can improve on as dealers, as staff, as management, all the time. We're trying to yeah. offer different things and try to get different things changed. Um, Free booze would be one thing. <laughs> that's a state issue, I think. Yeah, it's a state law with the whole I eighteen. Think, plus yeah, eighteen. That's that. exactly yeah. what it is. But uh, I just think you know, as a dealer. We're human too, so we make errors. You're going to get the guy that has one year experience that's going to flip a card over on a big game, and you're going to get the guy with 25 years, and it's the He's same thing can happen. Card, yeah. yeah, things like that are going to happen. I've made mistakes on pots, I've made mistakes on cards, and players, you name it. I've, I've seen it all in that room. Absolutely. And um, yes. yeah, I think that just, you know, you got to give a little credit as to what we're doing, and, you know, let it work that way. But I think the tipping part, too, is like, you know, a lot of people the other day got into a conversation about tip shaming. You know, we're not allowed to do that. Obviously, that would be no shit, terrible dude. for... But Dealer ever you, tip shamed me. You see it a lot between take tips out of other him. players. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, you know, you just won 300. Why don't you throw him a buck? You see that a lot, yeah, too. You don't know anybody's finances, though. True, but and how horrible does that make me feel? I'm yeah. not calling the guy out. Somebody else is calling the guy out on my behalf. Like, right now, it's almost like it, embarrassing to you too. Exactly. You know? Yes. Yep. That comes. I mean, up I, that's really ignorant on players because you don't know how much that guy's stuck. You don't know what. You have no idea what his of financial course. situation is. Mind your fucking is. business. Yeah. Yep. Like, let him. Whatever. You know what I mean. Yep. However, I did play in a tournament recently <laughs> where I know for a fact these two guys that chopped first and second, I know their financial situation a little bit. Um. And I know they each won like a Gino and didn't tip the dealer at all. Wow, that's, well, that's fucked up. Yeah, wow. And that's a that's a tournament, so he's not even getting tips any other hand from anybody yeah, else. Yeah, they just get you know? a piece of the hourly rate. Yeah. yeah. No, they get nothing. Not for this specific tournament. Oh, okay. They get nothing. Oh, it was wow. like a it was like a underground tournament. All right, guys. But anyway, hey, yeah. Enough. Let's wrap this up, yeah. Jay. Goodwin, thank you for coming out. Thanks I appreciate for you. you. Guys. I appreciate you know your your insight your. Your your opinions, your your everything. Just thank you, thank you for coming out. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. I, I wish you guys much success. I hope this gets bigger and better. I mean, keep going with the merchandise, you know, the advertising, you know, get it out there. I'm gonna try to help spread this. And so, can you wear J Squared shirts at work instead of your shirt? Uh, no, I can <laughs> no. wear one underneath. Fair enough, and just hit everybody yeah. with Superman real quick. Yeah, fucking, <laughs> you know. All right. Absolutely. But thank you guys very uh, much. I appreciate it. Real quick, it. before you go, uh, yes. so if anybody that's listening did want to maybe read or grab a copy of this book, is there, I know you said it's digital, so you can send it. Should they, is there a link or should they just DM us maybe? Like message us if they want the book and we yeah, can reach you out to you? Yeah, you have to message me or message you guys. Yeah, maybe Five we can hours. get that going somewhere. Yeah, I thought about selling it, but I've actually never sold a copy at all. 
cool, cool. I just felt like. All right, so yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely a, an interesting story. You know, I'm sure there's there's definitely going to be a lot of people that can relate to falling in love hard and having a breakup and heartache. battling that. Yeah, yeah, heartache. You know, we've all been there. So <laughs> if you like the book, guys, uh, shoot us a message. Shoot Jay Goodwin a message. We'll get you that copy. <laughs> you know, Jay Goodwin. Whatever. You know, whatever. It is what it is, man. Thanks for coming, and uh, I think we out. Later. Peace. Peace. All right, everybody. Thanks for listening. Uh, we just want to thank our sponsors again here. First and foremost, Division Street Auto, back from day one. Division Street Auto at 595 Division Street in Pawtucket. Give them a call, 401-723-7080. Mention the podcast, get your old 10% discount ski. And we got to give it up for Top Showroom Electric, uh, Gallery and Electric uh, Supply. They got everything you need from connectors to EMT to PVC to lighting, indoor, outdoor, the whole shebang. Call them up, 401-861-0695. They're located in Providence, Rhode Island. Onlyville Tire. Catch them at onlyvilletire.com. Find them on Facebook. They're located at 86 Plainville Street in Providence, Rhode Island. And they're your one-stop shop for any tires. New, used, get yourself plugged, whatever you need, kid. And big shout-out to JW & Son Construction. Um, commercial, residential, they're insured, registered, obviously. Call my boy John. You can call him at 401-487-4134. I know you look at those cabinets. Get them redone, you lazy bitch. Last but not least, Donkey Dodgers Poker. Now, if you're new to poker, you want to give it a shot, go to Donkey Dodgers Poker on Facebook. They've got venues every single day of the week, some days, two days a week. It's a nice, cheap night. You can go out, have some fun, learn the game with people that aren't taking it too seriously. Other than that, guys, thanks for listening. Peace, love, chicken grease.